and ICST with aim innovation and creation on education and physics research in COVID-19 era as a conference organized by physics education department, University of Matara. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now opening the ceremony of the first international conference, Science, Physics and Education, ICSPE 2021 on the second day. We would like to invite you to rise and sing Indonesian anthem, Indonesia Raya. May all we rise. Gentlemen, you may be seated now. Ladies and gentlemen, this conference is aimed at promoting, developing, and disseminating interdisciplinary research from many different fields of physics. This conference will be carried out on today, uh, 11 September 2021, by this teleconference. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now come to our second day of conference and we have a very great keynote speakers and it is an honor to me to introduce to all of you our today keynote speakers. The first one, the Honorable Associate Professor Muhammad Mustafa Awangkeci, PhD from University Putra Malaysia, from Malaysia. Second keynote speakers, the Honorable Professor Manjula Sharma from the University of Sydney, Australia. The third keynote speakers, the Honorable Professor Dr. Agus Suyatna, MSE, from Universitas Lampung, Indonesia. Professor Dr. Dr. Andus Edi Istiono, MSE, from Yogyakarta State University, Indonesia. Professor Dr. Johnny Rohmat, MSE from University of Mataram, Indonesia. Christine Pebo Abu, PhD from Sultan Kudarat State University, Philippines. And Dr. Gunawan, MPD from University of Mataram, Indonesia. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, we'd like to welcome you to our second day of international conference, ICSPE 2021, as the first international course conference which we held by our education physics, physics education study program from Universitas Mataram. Ladies and gentlemen, before going to the keynote speaker session, we would like to ask you to turn on your camera to rename your Zoom things ID, and we're going to take a photo of we would like to ask all of the committee to come forward to the front, please. All of the committee would like to ask you to come forward to take a photo, please. Ask you to come forward to take a photo, please.
and once again for all the participants and so meeting you can turn on your cameras because we are going to take pictures together with the committee of the international conference and specific center and education Ladies and gentlemen, I already see the monitor and some of you still not turn on your camera. We'd like to ask you to turn on your camera, please. Thank you. Okay, in my sign, we're going to take a picture. One, two, three. Thank you once again. I would like to ask you to take a photo. Okay, in my sign, one, two, three. Thank you. You may be seated now for all the committees. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, now we are going to start our agenda for today. There is presentation from our keynote speaker for today. For the first sessions will be delivered by Associate Professor Muhammad Mustafa Awang Keci PhD from University Putra Malaysia, Malaysia, and Professor Manjula Sarma from the University of Sydney, Australia and will be moderated by Mr. Muhammad Taufik, MSE. For Mr. Muhammad Taufik, MSE, table is yours. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, Tawbil Alamin. Wassalatu wassalamu ala ashtafil anbiya'i wa mursalin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Good morning, 
all participants of uh, International Conference Scientific and Education, University of Mataram. In this session, we have two speakers. First, is Associate Professor Muhammad Mustafa Awang Kesi. He will deliver the paper titled Increase Critical Current Density and Feeling Force in IPH2 CO3 O7 and Deltatic Film by PAGR O3 Nano Inclusion. In this session, we have 20 minutes. And I hope all participants will get mention from uh, Bapak Muhammad Awan Kesit. Okay, for efficiency of time, please. To, 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 Associate Professor Muhammad Mustafa Awang. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Can you hear my voice? Okay, it's clear. Please. Clear. Can you see my screen, guys? Yeah, yeah. Really? Oh, okay, really. Okay, I just try. Okay, go ahead. Can... You, have, you have 20 minutes. Okay. Can my did my slide working well? Yeah. Good. Okay, let I start now. Good, In, good. Very good. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Taufik, as our moderator of these sessions. Excellencies, the honorable speakers, distinguished guests. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for inviting me to this. International Conference Science Physics and Education with the theme Innovation and Creation on Education and Physics Research in COVID-19 Era. I hope you and your family are well and healthy during this uncertain time. This COVID, for information, I think everybody knows the COVID keep increasing especially in Asia region. Okay, this COVID-19 pandemic has caused increasingly rapid and unprecedented change in our country. I'm very much thankful to Mr. Chairman of the ICSPE21, Professor Madia, or Assistant Professor Dr. Aris Doyan, for giving me a chance or opportunities to talk about my current research the topic of increased critical current density and pinning force of YBCO tick flow. What is all about? Again, I'm from Department of Physics, University Putra, Malaysia, where the University Putra, Malaysia are situated in the middle between Putra, Jaya and Kuala Lumpur. My slide, okay. My Paula will cover with the introduction some theoretical of superconductivity, application of superconductivity, literature review, and result and conclusions. Everybody know what is a superconductivity. It was discovered long, long time ago since 1911. Superconductivity is not only the fascinating material, but it's also incredibly useful. Again, when you see the material, when you see the material with an electric current, when electric current pass through this conductor, this conductor, yeah, you can see clearly. I cannot play my video now. Never mind.
Okay, this video cannot be played. When we have the energy, when we have the energy loss from any kind, whether in heat or light, the amount of energy can be varied. This is what we call it the typical normal conductor. However, when we have the superconductor where the material can display zero resistance and it can expel out externally applied field on it when it's cooled down below the critical temperature of TC. Here is one of the example why BCO magnetic material, why BCO material under the magnetic field line when we are placing them in the magnet it will levitate. Here is a some example of magnetic flux exclusion where I unable to play the video. This is the way if we try to compare the superconducting material and non-superconducting material. For instance, we take the copper. Okay, most of the copper they have the electrical resistance. Some material like copper, aurium, or silver. They are great conductor electrically. However, they are not super conductive when we are cool them under certain temperature. I mean, we are bring the temperature to the almost zero Kelvin when it's approaching 92 Kelvin for YBCO, lithium, barium, copper oxide, it start to super conductive. And again, in application-wise, when we talk about application and technology, three major players in the world, first is United States, some country from Asia, yeah, and the third one is European country. In Asia, we have the magnetic levitation train was developed by Japanese company. And again, as important achievement, yeah, superconductor has been used widely in the human body. Human body for MRI to diagnose tumor. And we again, in current situation, we maybe we can diagnose the COVID-19 virus, perhaps. Another one we can use as the transmission cable. The application of magnetic levitation has been brought to the attention in the world where the United States, yeah, United States tried to extend, try to extend this technology to bring into the reality. If you look back to the current situation for the high population country like Indonesia, like India, like China, we need to travel from one point to another point. And again, the best transportation system is train. However, we have some limitation of the train since train are using the normal wheel. Yeah, when they are using the normal wheel, typically the wheel slip when they are moving too fast. And it's how the magnetic levitation train come along to solve this issue. This is one of the example in the figure four, you can see the mag left in Nagoya, where the train actually they are levitated and they are using the normal magnetic material. However, Japan developed the technology to use the superconducting magnet. Why superconducting magnet is useful? Since it can give the higher magnetic field to make sure we can accelerate the train as faster as can we go. For instance, in China, July 2021, they just unveiled a maglev capable for the top speed as 600 km per hour. Okay, here's one example. Yeah, I can play my video now. This is my experience riding the first maglev train in Nagoya in 2020. Yeah. And you can see the train itself, they are levitated, levitated, yeah, no iron wheel needed because air maintenance and vibration can be reduced. Yeah. 
Okay. In United States itself, by having the maglev, we can expect it to reduce the carbon emissions. Carbon emission is so crucial nowadays, especially for the highly populated density. Yeah, we can reduce quite number of the one, sorry, two million ton per year. And this method, this method has brought to the attention in Japan since 1970. Now they are proposing, they are proposing the high speed MATLAB from Nagoya to Tokyo. Again, they are using typical magnetic, but however, these magnetic materials are coming in the coil as a coil, as a strip. Yeah. And this magnet, yeah, this magnet for, for example, the direction of the magnet, you can see they have north and thought when the magnet pass below the center of the coil, it will it will repulse and it will create the repulsive force and magnet can accelerate the train. For instance, nowadays, if we take an example from Jakarta to Bali, Jakarta to Bali with 1,159 kilometers by land road. This is my, uh, my prior research through, through the Google map. I found that it would take about 18 hours. However, by implement this technology to the train system from Jakarta to Bali, even though we can go to Lombok, we can go to Lombok less than three point, about 3.5 hours. The speed currently is about 518 kilometers per hour. And this project has been developed and still ongoing from Tokyo to Nagoya and expected to kick off in 2027. Okay, I mentioned before to make sure that we can overcome this magnetic material or superconducting material in this train system. This comes with the first generation high temperature wire. Okay, since 1986, first discover of high temperature superconducting wire, this material has been rapidly researched by several people in the world, and they are using several technique powder in tube wire. First available, however, it only can apply for the bismuth, bismuth and thallium. This material has a huge degradation in critical current density, since they are really brittle. And this system are operated under liquid nitrogen temperature. Okay, and second generation of high temperature wire pop up where we discover YBCO. YBCO is considered is an alternative material where the excellent capability to carry high critical current density in the higher magnetic field. And again, this second generation of HTS, yeah, also coated conductor, which are based on the thin flame technology. From the thin flame technology, every country in the world rapidly evolved to produce the high quality and stable material to use in the several applications such as magnetic levitation train, MRI, and the grid energy transportation. Okay, this is a Paul Chu who discovered this material in 1987. Okay, this material quite fascinating. Yeah, this material quite fascinating material is discovered during the time where he did his postdoctoral at Texas, yeah, at Texas. If you look through the structure of YBCO, they are quite complex. They consist several layer, several material. For instance, they have yttrium, barium, copper, and they are ceramic material. At the low temperature, about 93 Kelvin, they can behave as a super conductive material. They are quite complex. It consists CUO plane and CUO chain where it can bring much current at particular time. This is Mr. Paul Chu, visited, or Professor Paul Chu, visited our laboratory in University of Malaysia. 
Yes, since that several people, uh, several researchers are aggressively involved in the YBCO material. Even though people say that YBCO are approaching the saturated time. However, the current situation in application industry, the YBCO widely used in that technology, such as, as I mentioned before, MRI, yeah, MRI, the magnetic levitation train, and the grid technology. However, the application of Y123 or YBCO ethium barium copper oxide with a critical JS higher temp script, critical current density is limited yeah, to non transformative field due to their weak links. And the weak link is related to the grain boundaries. We need to make sure that. The grain boundaries are well attached with one uh, a single a grain to the another grain. And it will attribute to the lower JC. And the nanoparticles inclusion can be added to add the flux spinning. What happened when the material has been placed in the magnetic field? Yeah, the critical current density will abruptly drop because of the magnetic field penetrate to the superconducting material as a vortex, where the vortex is classified as a non-superconducting state. This is a current flow through the superconducting material. This is magnetic field applied. And the idea of this research, we try to pin the magnetic flux to penetrate. We need to stop the magnetic flux from penetrate to our sample and we try to get a good quality of y123 and to improve the critical current density through the nano inclusion what we call it through the artificial nano inclusion we are using pulse laser deposition system where we call it as a pld they are high laser focus inside this vacuum chamber and it going to strike the target of the material this is how superconducting target materials placed in the PLD chamber. The laser beam is coming from 45 degree and you can see the plume or the laser plume in the plasma form will be transformed to the substrate. These substrates are considered as a superconducting layer in, oh sorry, on the strontium titanate substrate. And again, pulse laser deposition is a versatile technique. It's quite complex. However, it's growing fast and capital costs are low. Yeah. And the good thing about this system, we consume the targets material gradually because they are homogeneous and not require frequent and intermediate polishing of the target. Every separate, at least we can run up to five deposition at one time and we can produce the repeatable good quality material. This is how the laser hit the targets and the target will fly down. Yeah, will fly down to the substrate. You can see this is nano inclusion that we put YBCO plus barium zirconite. And this is how the cross sectional look like of the pure YBCO film on the strontium titanate substrate. And this is YBCO plus BZO film with nano inclusion. Okay, we have very optimized preparation before we can come to this part, at least we need six to eight months to develop the optimization process to make sure we are using the correct parameter, the correct amount as what we want to prepare our own kit. We need to have the correct recipe with the correct value. And we done the critical temperature characterization. If you look from here, the TC value for the basic O flum is slightly lower compared to the pure flum. Yeah, is again when we are adding something impurities, the idea is to pin the flux, to pin the flux. However, since the impurities will act as a non superconducting state, the TC will reduce a little bit, but still within the range still within the range, the idea of that we want to get actually the 
higher critical color density. You can see from the blue line here, from the blue square line here, the JC is about, yeah, is about 5,000. But when we put, yeah, when we increase, when we add, when we add the impurities of BZO, yeah, you can see the selfie is higher in the tennis plum for 1.29 is about 4.24 power by 6 cm squared. So again, all of our film show the higher JC, yeah? the higher JC, instead that here is power by 5, you can get power by 6. Sorry? Okay, okay, go ahead. I can go now. Okay, sorry. Okay, and again, the pinning force also increases. The pinning force also increases. The thickness dependent of the pinning force from here as shown in the figure 14. Yeah, at 65, it's well defined. The maximum is about 20 G and M power by 3. Okay. If we look back to the SEM analysis, in order to investigate the JC increases or JC decreases in our firm, we discover that YBCO firm with the increasing thickness, yeah, with the increasing thickness morphology properties shows show the sub micron poles are about three hundred nanometers, with one, yeah, with three point five micromet, and you can see the pores are slightly reduced because of that the current can flow easily in the thin film thinner film not the thin film thinner film about 1.29 micromet and again by apply by apply the basic o in our material it will create like a columnar defect from our sem analysis if you look through our idea before we are proposing the columnar defect on this material. Yeah. And this columnar defect, yeah, the formation of the nano rod can be found easily for the thin, thinnest film for 1.29 micromet. And from the XRD, we discover, we discover most of the value of our XRD are in the good working order. And the oxygen deficiency for some material are slightly different. And finally, in conclusion, the result we discover here is clearly show the enhancement of the JC and FP between pure material and added material. Okay. Again, the decreases of TC was discovered because of the non superconducting state exists in our film and we finally approach the good value for this is about 200 to 400 ampere at 65 not 77 65 kelvin and this is our group members from upm we have quite a number yeah let me introduce a little bit about upm itself upm is situated between kuala lumpur and putrajaya we have alumni UPM from the chairman of ICSPE, Pak Aris Doyan is our alumni. Yeah, it's a number two in Malaysia. It's ranked a number two in Malaysia. They are considered as a research university from 20s. And in the world, we are 143 in the QS ranking. In Asia, we are number 28. Yeah, among our all subjects, we have 11 subjects, top 200. We have 15 faculties, 11 institutes, two schools, and three research excellence centers. And we have international accreditation from several academic bodies, from AACSB, Engineering Alliance, Royal Commercial Society, and Chartered Institute of Environment Health. And we have some collaboration with other seven in university around the world. One of them from, I think, from Indonesia. We have Gajah Mada, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and we have quite variants of international MOU, 198. And now we have 1,581 inbound 
foreign students from 59 countries. We are actively involved in the summer school program. Maybe the postgraduate can join us with the good, good experience with 19 program in our green campus. And finally, terima kasih. Thank you. Thank you very much for your the presentation. So said Professor Muhammad Mustafa Awang Tichik, PhD. And for discussion, we will continue after second keynote speaker. And now we invite Professor Manjula Sarma to deliver the presentation which title approaches to educational linear videos on online platforms reflections and alternative conceptions misconceptions thank you very much can you hear me yes okay i will I share can hear you. please yes Yes, I will share screen um, and can you see my screen? Yes, I do, Professor. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you to the committee for the invitation. It's my great pleasure to be presenting to um, the audience of the International Conference uh, on Science, Physics and Education. Um, First of all, I would like to acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Yura Nation. That's the lens on which the work that I am going to present is being done. I acknowledge the elders, uh, the present and the future of the indigenous population as I do my, um, do my work and present my work here. Um, the title of my talk is Approaches to Online Educational Linear Videos reflections and alternative conceptions, misconceptions. One of the reasons why I think this is important is because um, we've had to switch to online teaching and learning due to COVID. Uh, and that's um, disrupted a lot of the patterns that we have been teaching and learning in. While we've all done a fantastic job and I'm just amazed at how well people have flipped and switched and so on, and how well our students have also taken up this challenge. Um, we are in the process now of trying to figure out how to optimize or maximize educational benefits for the students. There is no doubt that there's a lot of um, resources out there that we are all drawing on. Uh, and that are readily available online. You can Google and find so many videos um, and, and material that we can actually use. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to point to two somewhat little ideas which are relatively easy to do, but which can have profound impact on student learning. And it necessarily does not take a lot of time on the part of the teacher. So these are strategies and they apply across all sciences, not just physics. So two strategies, two tips, two lessons I hope you can take away, which will make your choice of selecting online videos a bit more wiser, if I may um, say so, from the theoretical and, and, and conceptual cognitive point of view. Um, and, and they relate to two stories. And I'll start the theoretical bit very, 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 I'll sort of have it very brief and summarize it. So we are all about getting students to reason, if they're reasoning and looking at the bits and pieces of how things are happening and the ideas and the conceptions connect and the experiences around them, then they understand more and they learn more. So reasoning, understanding and learning are actually intimately linked. So what we're trying to do in face-to-face, -face, online, whatever we're trying to actually do, we're trying to get students to learn. And the way to do that is through understanding and reasoning is what I'm trying to say. Now, there are two pathways. Uh, there's a pathway where we normally look at the ideas and the connections. So we basically look at um, 
we look, look at content concepts and then we come up with end of the chapter problems that students solve and somehow this is sort of captured in cognitive load theory and their education other educational theories too and we hope that by doing these things they are reasoning they're reflecting and they're learning the other pathway that's been around and has emerged out of constructivism is the idea of alternative conceptions and over here the conceptual tests with, which are not necessarily number crunching type of things so there are two pathways and, and there are more right this is a very simple simple um, presentation or idea behind education in the sciences so one pathway is through alternative conceptions conceptual tests and we need both of these right and 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 more as well not just the yeah, yeah, yeah. The other is connecting ideas and so on now the work that i'm going to talk about is to do with um with uh, different topics. And this is the kinds of topics that my group has actually researched. Uh, and but today I'm going to focus on just selected bits of those. Right. So the first story is about alternative conceptions. And these are videos and the PA, based on the PhD work of Derek Muller, that's him out there. Now, Derek has actually got a YouTube channel that is called Veritasium. And Veritasium has got 1 billion downloads views and it has now hit 10 million subscribers so it is actually massive and his videos draw on the ideas that i'm going to talk about here so he's one of the most famous science communicators out there i go to conferences and people get my my autograph because he did his phd with me right so that's kind of cool so as part of his phd one of the first studies that he did was he he created short online videos and this was before youtube actually was created so this was in in late 2000s right uh, 2007 2008 so very tasium check it out if you're online now in his videos uh, and he wanted short videos basically because that's what the cognition you know psych research says we focus for about three or four five seven minutes at the most so he created two videos one was exposition so this is where a person stands and tells like i am doing right now it's an exposition the other was a dialogue where a student turns up to a tutor and says i don't quite get this and then the tutor sort of has their stuff on the on the desk and so on and goes through a, a discussion so inherently this is a bit longer over here the wrong ideas being discussed and within them the right idea is embedded as well so he he, he had these and he delivered these two videos with human ethics approval to the hundreds of students that we have in our first year classes so large sample sizes he was able to do stats and so on so the research design he gave it to the first year physics students and this was online the first thing they did when they came into university this was kind of and worth one mark uh, but but this was just set up that way randomly assigned one student logs on gets one version the other one gets the other version one of the versions is dialogue which is our x those who do science um, or education work will know that this is the x o research design method the other one had had the exposition there was a pre-test and a post-test they had the same pre-test and the same pro, pro post test that's what the uh, ones mean and then and then they also had a mental effort test and this is a well-known psychometric measure that's out out there one item line which tells you how much mental effort has been invested and there were qualitative data focus groups as well that he ran afterwards selected with the groups now with the pre-test for both of those groups there was no statistically significant difference so that's exposition that's the dialogue this is our treatment the error bars overlap and this group just had a bit more but statistically there was no statistically significant difference when we look at the post test, which is the dark green bars, then there is a huge difference for the ones that had the dialogue, where they got messed up concepts, they got ideas which were wrong and correct all together. Right. Now, over here, if you look at this one, there was no statistical difference when the exposition occurred. So with the exposition, them watching that little video with all the correct physics had no effect. Whereas with the dialogue, with the messed up physics, it made a difference. Okay, so that actually shows that a conversation where there's a dialogue and the correct and the incorrect are discussed gets students to think and reason and so on. And then the mental effort. 
right so this thing on the side out here and i'll spend a moment on that this is the one item line that's used in psychology coxsike for mental effort so you insert an item and you get the students to select did they exert extremely low mental effort extremely low mental low men, extremely low very low low rather low neither low rather high and high mental effort and they tick those boxes right now this has actually been validated with studies physiological studies where people have actually been given tasks and they've had their pressure meters and all sorts of sen sensors stuck to their body and this correlates with phys physiological measures as well and there was a difference. So the ones who had the dialogue with the messed up knowledge as well in there, they actually invested more mental effort as measured by this, which is validated psychometrically and physiologically. So that was kind of quite nice. It, 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 it was just cool. So then with the focus groups, here's what, what he found. He actually selected the students who had attended the dialogue and when when he sort of did that 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 thing that when the students did the survey they were actually asked can we contact you uh, to, to do to do an interview and they had said yes or no right so then he selected the dialogue group and he asked them you know let's have a chat about the videos what did you think and these are some of the quotes like in his research paper he's got a publication out of this it'll you'll find more details i like that the guy was sort of confused as I was to begin with, the fact that he was confused kind of helped the whole explanation process in me to understand. Saying all the common misconceptions, that was really helpful so you know what it is, but you also know what it's not, right? So the idea is that many high school teachers use the word misconceptions quite clearly. So the students come in to us and they kind of know that there's this thing that exists, which is the wrong kind of physics, which is misconceptions. So you can know that if you end up with that, you're like, no, can't be that. So they've actually articulated and acknowledged and verbalized that something cannot be that way and not just accepted the, the, the one idea. So that helped a lot. Did you have anything like that? Yeah, the juggling ball one, the misconception is there's a force and that it's very slowly decreasing until it reaches the top and then it disappears or whatever. That was the misconception, I think. So the students are kind of analyze what was the wrong thing in it rather than looking at what was the right thing in it, right? And I think that's a big mindset and that actually gets the reasoning going. So that was kind of cool. And then for the exposition group, here's the kinds of things that they were saying. It wasn't that hard to pay attention to, I think, because I already knew what she was talking about. So I was listening, but I wasn't really paying at the most attention. Newton's first law, I knew already. I guess it was a bit of revision from two years ago. So when they when they go in, when they saw the exposition video, they kind of switched off because it was revision, they knew it before, it was all correct stuff, and therefore their mental effort was not exerted and they were not really learning or understanding or whatever, right? Whereas in contrast, when you look at these ones for the dialogue, because there was confusing, incorrect stuff in there, they were like, I'm thinking that, but that's not quite right. The person is saying, no, it's, it's you know, maybe it's this, the other way. So that was quite cool and that brought it. So the lesson learned then with this one here, and this is the pathway with the alternative conceptions is if you want to get your students to learn, then find videos that don't just give the correct, but also kind of discuss um, what's wrong, why can't it be like this, and so on as well. So next time you go looking for a video for your class, see if you can find this kind of videos that don't just straight line tell one thing. Now, there's some kinds of knowledge where that is important. Procedural knowledge, you need that right recipe, right? But for others where it's conceptual understanding, then you need a bit more diversity in the thinking. Now a short story about this other bit out here, which is about the more problem solving kind of stuff. This is another PhD student who's uh, close to completing, uh, Peter Lebedev. Uh, and again, it's a quasi experiment method. And over here, it was mixed content. There were a few problems which were buoyancy, a few maths type problems, a few about mechanics and different ideas, right? And this was based on a video that Derek had put up on YouTube, right? So this video actually had four questions 
And each of those questions follow Dewey's principles. Now, if anyone does education, science education, uh, it, it would be hard pressed to say that you don't or haven't met Dewey. Right. It, it is kind of standard that there are a few names you would meet and Dewey is one of them. Dewey basically said that there are uh, uh, a couple of principles and the principle was one of the, the, the first, it starts off with having an experiencing experience and having the interpretation of that experience. So in these videos, and again, these are very short videos. These are the four riddles you'll find on the YouTube channel Veritasium. So they're accessible to you. So here's an example of a rolling cylinder. It rolls down. And so Derek pro presents the experience and, and gives it an interpretation. Here's, here's the cylinder. It rolls down. It's a mysterious cylinder. And then he names the problem. He actually says and, and poses a question, right? So names the problem is like poses a question. What's inside the mystery cylinder is what he says, because the cylinder rolls down and then it starts to roll back up again. And so that's a mystery. So he poses that. So according to Dewey, when you want to get students to connect, sorry, lots of ideas and make them hang together rather than go deep into one conceptions like with misconception and alternative conceptions, this is like connecting lots of different ideas together, right? So this is now motion, rolling, there's something inside the cylinder, comes back up again. So lots of different ideas. And then, the third thing that Dewey says, you encourage the students to generate an explanation and maybe ramify our hypotheses. Can you simply leave your answers in the comments be below? So for this one, what Derek did when he initially posted it and then he stopped and then he sort of provided the solution video after so many million viewers had put their answers up. Uh, he, he, he then actually um, got them to write their answers down. Now, when we ran this, there were two parts of this study. First of all, was when he released the video, we did with the public audience. And then we released it with our first year classes. We took these videos, we showed them this question video, which is this one goes for a couple of minutes. And then we said the students needed to write their answers in uh, Qualtrics. Um, university level uh, database and they entered the answers in there. It's published in the European Journal of Physics, so you can have a look at more detail if you want to. So the first part of the research design was video one, four minutes, 23 seconds. And the first survey was, did you modify, you know, um, what was your answer? What did you think? So for each of the four problems, they wrote their answers down. And then after a week, we released the solutions video. The solutions video had 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 uh, testing the selected hypotheses. So over here, Derek actually shows what's inside the cylinder. So there is honey, and then there are two ping pong balls. And then when you do that, the ball rolls back again and provided an explanation, right? And then he looked at a few of the answers and he did it with their answers and then showed what happened. So one of the answers was sand, water, and so on. So he did it with those things as well. Um, so the first part was this, which occurred one week. And then a week later, we showed the solutions video, which was a bit longer because there were four problems, four riddles, and then the second part of the survey. In the second part of the survey, we actually asked them, did you modify your answers? If yes, why? If not, why not? So remember, for the first part, we've actually got the students answers written down. And then we're saying, did you modify your answer? Yes or no? And why not? And how did you modify? It? So that was kind of cool, right? Uh, because we could check how they were going. How did they modify? It? And OK, the thing that really, there's a lot of stats and numbers in there, but that's fine. The thing that really, really grabbed our interest was this thing that there was a large group and hundreds of students, right? So if you look at those numbers, a large group that did not modify their answers, right? If you look at this, that's question one, question two, question three, question four, and we could match. Did they really modify their answers or did they not? So we could do that kind of you know, sort of analysis as well.
And then there, for some questions, there were a large numbers who did not modify. And for you know, others, there were small numbers that did not modify. So why don't they change the answer when they have seen the correct answer? That kind of doesn't make sense, right? When you show someone the correct answer, you'd expect them to change it, right? And, 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 get, and, and sort of kind of rewrite the correct answer or change their mind or whatever. But they weren't doing it. Look at this one. This is 171. This is 171, right? So that kind of stuff. So, uh, and the matched and unmatched is whether the answer was, was the same in both of the surveys, right? Uh, but I won't go into the detail. But so here's the intriguing thing. What were the reasons? And I think this is really important because there are lots of things that people don't change their behavior and actions and answers to, even in social circumstances beyond the teaching and learning. So these, these two that's up here outside the blue, blue box on top, right, um, was, you know, my answer was wrong. This is for the ones who modified them. My answer was wrong. My answer was correct. So, so, so that's the first one. So when they modified or they didn't modify, the, the reasons they gave were quite similar. They were parallels, right? So if they modified, they said, my answer was correct. That's why I modified. Did not modify was, you know, my answer was wrong. That's why I modified. So, so there was a mirror, mirror, mirror. For, for both students who modified and did not modify their answers. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say, but have a look at the paper if you don't. And then, and then there was a group who repeated the solutions, right? Uh, here, my answer was wrong. So that they came in and repeated the answers and there was none for this group out here. And then these are the reasons for not changing the answers and changing the, I was close, but not exactly right. That's why I changed my answers. Why did they not modify the answers? Although I was not fully, fully correct, I was still correct. Kind of think about that. Although I was not fully correct, I was still correct. Therefore, they did not change their answer, right? So that was like mind boggling for us, right? And then for those who, who sort of had it, had it wrong and then changed their answer, I got it partly right with the heavy liquid, however, did not include the ping pong balls. That's why I changed my answer. Although I said, this is the ones who did not modify. Although I said thick, sticky, heavy substance, the ping pong balls added to the mixture changed the gravity. And, and therefore I did not change my answer because I was kind of right. And here's my explanation why I was kind of right. And therefore I should not and will not and did not change. Right. And then there was the group that actually uh, modified the answer, uh, but they had an alternative answer. So my answer was correct and it would have worked, but I'm happy with the answer you've given. And then there's this group. My idea for stretched object inside the cylinder might still exhibit. So my answer was different. I had an alternative answer. It was right. So I'm not going to change. Uh, so in an exam or in some other circumstances, we would mark these people wrong. But these people here are actually using quite a sophisticated reasoning process and they're still learning, but they, have, uh, they, they, they haven't changed because they are close enough and they're kind of correct enough, right? So there's a difference between exams and assessment where you really want them to get to the correct answer to a teaching and learning activity inside the classroom where you're trying to shift them slightly and it's going to take time. And over there, we've got to be a bit more open to these kinds of things. Otherwise, students start to sort of say, this is, you, you know, they don't really understand. They just try to rote learn and give you the right answer. So in the teaching and learning con context, these become really important for an exam. We want the correct answer, right? So there is value in looking at these things when you choose videos, how close is close and they may not change, but it's still a teaching moment. Right. And then those who actually did not fully understand or those who actually thought that the questions were trick questions or they thought, thought that we were the questions were trying to misguide them and so on. And then there was a group who said that they thought that um, um, we were just being being cheeky. Right. And 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 uh, a groups who basically said we don't understand. We just don't know it. So, you know, 
whatever, and then the miscellaneous group. So that's looking at the um, that that's actually looking at at why they change and reflect, and that in depth thing is really important for the reasoning. So that's my story number two, and I think I'm going okay for time. And this was my story number one, right? Um, now, if you want to look at more, uh, then I suggest you look at uh, my Google Scholar citations. You'll actually find all the papers in there and find the papers by Peter Lebedev and Derek Muller. Uh, and uh, they'll give you more hints in terms of multimedia. Um, uh, so uh, I'd like to thank, uh, as acknowledgements, um, the groups that I work with, the students, the participants, my university, and also end with acknowledging the Gadigal people of the Euro Nation. Thank you, Terima okay. Shia. Do I have more time? Do, do you want me to expand on something or Professor Tofik? Uh, this time is up for you. Okay. Okay. Uh, we continue with discussion. Thank you. I invite all participants to ask. Uh, both Associate Professor Muhammad Mustafa Awang Kecik, PhD, and Professor Manjula Salma. Uh, and I invite all participants to ask directly. And uh, this is from Siti Nur Aziza. There is a question. Uh, this this question is to Professor Manjula Sarma, I apologize for still not understanding the mental effort mentioned in the presentation. Can you explain it in simple language? This is the question, uh, Professor Manjula. Okay, uh, thank you, Siti Nur Aziza. Uh, I uh, the the mental effort is when you're trying to understand something, your brain works and you're really focusing on what's actually happening, right? You're really concentrating. When you concentrate, you're exerting mental effort. Now, it is very hard to measure. So the instrument that we have used to measure mental effort has not been created by us. I am not a cognitive psychologist. I cannot create that instrument. So what I did was I went to the psychology literature. That's what my student Derek did. He went to the psychology literature and he found this one, one line that you can insert in a survey. So if you're running and what we were looking for was something that short because if you have five or six questions, it makes your pre-test and post-test too long. So we wanted, a and this particular item basically says, when doing this task, were you exerting? And then option one, extremely low mental effort, very low mental effort, low mental effort, rather low mental effort, high mental effort and and they will and there are nine of those and normally they will select one right and of course there's a standard deviation if you have hundreds of students and they select it you sort of analyze that it generates meaningful data now the the thing is before selecting that measure, which is a one liner and very nice to use, we actually looked at lots of instruments, right? And this is the one that had a lot of validation behind it. The physiologist had given people different tasks and they had stuck pressure meters and blood pressure meters and temperature thermometer meters and all sorts of things. And they had found that this actually correlated with the, the, the actual physiological measures. Do you know when you're concentrating really hard, you get tense, your blood flows, your blood has to flow to the brain. 
So lots of things change when you're concentrating really hard. And that is it. Are you happy with that? Okay, thank you very much, Professor, for your explanation. Um, there is any question? Me, Mr. Taufik. Can I ask okay. a question? Uh, Nina Nisrina, want to ask to Professor Manjula also? Yes. Please, please ask. Thank you very professor. much for Mr. Moderator. Uh, I would like to say thank you for giving me a chance to talk with Professor Manjula Sharma. Pleasure to meet you, Professor. I'm Nina from Universitas Mataram. Uh, I already searched about the mental effort, and there are three indicators problem, process, and product. And I'm new in this variables. I would like to ask you, what is the relationship or correlation between the student misconception itself uh, to the reasoning uh, when you evaluate it with this mental effort? Is that give a very high impact for its misconception and the reasoning itself. And my second question, Professor, it's not uh, a question, but I would like to ask your suggestion. I have a lot of uh, research, uh, including teaching students and giving a model, a new model of learning and then online learning. But sometimes a lot of students feel unsure about their answer. I, I saw your uh, research result that showing a lot of students unmodified the their answer after second surprise. But for my case, they didn't modify it because they feel unconfidence, they lack of their confidence of their argumentation, and then they underestimating the online learning itself. They look for the video. I, I give them a question and they give the answer. To make sure they not misconcept the concept itself, I give uh, the next question like you have done, but they seem unsure and they didn't give any answer. A uh, few of them also looking the answer to the internet and they give a very similar answer to that. And I uh, believe they they didn't feel any confidence for the answers and they only give the answer based on the Googles. So what do you think about that, Professor? I would like to ask your suggestion what I'm gonna do for that and to make sure that this lack, lack of confidence can be changed for the students itself. Thank you, Professor, pleasure to meet you. Same here, pleasure to meet you too. Um, so your first question was about the correlation between reasoning, mental effort and misconceptions. Yeah. Now, now um, mental effort, if you have a class of students, the students who are concentrating and who are engaging with understanding the, the idea so that they can engage with the conceptions, the misconceptions, they will have a higher mental effort. You might find that in a class of 30, 40 students, there'll be those students who, for whatever reasons, you know, their confidence or whatever, they choose or they cannot, are not able to engage with the content. Then their mental effort will actually be low. Sometimes they have personal problems, family problems. Sometimes they, you know, in this audience, there's a whole heap of people listening to me. And some may not understand my language, my accent. Some may not understand um, what I'm trying to say because they're not in the field. Then they will not have. So for mental effort, there's a kind of threshold. You need to actually kind of understand something to be able to concentrate. If you don't understand anything, it's hard to. So that's where the prior knowledge comes in, right? You've got to have enough prior knowledge to step in to be able to concentrate, right? Um, uh, 
And then your second question is about confidence. And I think it also verged on the idea of, of um, how do we get students to submit answers online, right? Now, confidence is really interesting that, that, uh, that there are students who will actually be not confident, but they know everything, right? Or there are students who actually will not be confident because they don't know anything. So similar to mental effort, there's again a one-liner that you can put in. And when you put that one-liner in with mental effort and confidence, you can actually get a quite nice measure of what's happening in your classroom. So if you look at literature, there's a one-liner confidence and, and uh, as well that you can put in. And I'll leave that with you now. Thank you, Professor. Uh, about your second question, uh, um, Mr. Taufik, can I give the response? Uh, there are two questions uh, behind you. I think it's enough for you. Okay. Uh, the next question to Professor Manjula. It comes from Associate Professor Aris Doyan. He said that he teach about rigid body subject. Uh, he said, I found so many mis misconceptions with my students. For example, similar problem in sliding. How are your opinion, Professor? So this is where uh, I think the demonstrations come in really handy. So this is where um, uh, with cylinders and rotational mechanics, especially. So just, just the idea of getting them to play, predict, do experimentation. But again, it's a very tricky area. And I, um, I sympathize because that's where we struggle as well. Um, there are papers around that you can have a look at. And there's some nice videos. Um, yeah, so it's it's a hard time. But when they get to higher years, it kind of falls into place. The other thing about knowledge is we build it gradually. We can't solve everything at first year. So it teaches it's important to sort of say, this is what they've understood. And these are the things that they'll understand later on. So if, if it's, it's okay, if they don't understand everything. Okay, thank you very much for your nice explanation, Professor. Next question uh, to first uh, keynote speaker, Associate Professor Muhammad Mustafa Awang Kecik, PhD. The question comes from Associate Professor Aris Doyan. Okay. Uh, the question is for us. Okay, can I repeat the question? Explain the general public what are the definite boundaries of the difference between conductors and superconductors in the laboratory yes. analysis and their okay. applications? Yeah, okay, yeah. again, the normal conductor, it has the resistance, as I show from the critical temperature for the resistance versus temperature curve. Yeah, the normal conductor, like our typical conductor, copper itself, it has resistance B equal to. I R when we have the current flow, yeah, from one point to the another point with the potential difference, it will create the resistance. The resistance is came is might came from the structure itself in the copper. However, for the superconducting material, it has no other or what we call the zero electrical resistance, but below the T C below the critical temperature. We need to cool down the material. For the moment, if we take an example, like that material in the room temperature, it can behave like a typical insulator. However, when we bring down the temperature, suddenly electrical resistance disappear. It goes because of the Cooper pair. The electrons are moving like a couple, conductor. not like a typical conductor. Might be you can see all the application in our daily activities, such as MRI system. I strongly everybody are aware what is an MRI. MRI itself, it can radiate the higher magnetic field 
to our body and we can get some image of our for cancer tumor or whatever however to generate the higher magnetic field we need the superconductor or superconducting material since it can give or it can sustain the higher magnetic field that is the answer thank you thank you very much for the answer and time is up now let's us give big applause to the two speakers thank you very much uh, professor muhammad mustafa awang kuci psd and professor manjula sama i hope next time we can meet again in the next meeting thank you very much assalamualaikum warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. Good morning. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. <clears throat>
uh, in short introduction. Okay. Thank you to all audience who have been patient in waiting for scientific studies to be presented by expert in its, his field academy. To start the presentation, we have to the following rules. One, each presenter is given 20 minutes. After the first presentation is finished, it will be continued by the second from by the second presentation and so on. And the discussion session is provided 30 minutes after the presentation of the three presenters are finished. Therefore, it is hoped that the audience can pay attention and take notes to whom the question will be asked. Let's start with Professor Agus Suyatna. Time is yours. Remember, only 20 minutes from now. Please. Thank you, uh, Mr. Kosim. Yep. I would like to share screen. Okay, you can see my presentation. Okay, it is okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad Rabbi srohli sadri wa yasirli amri wa hlukdatan min lisani ya kuhu kauli The Honorable Sorry This is something in my screen The Honorable Head of Department Dr. Cruz SPD The Honorable uh, Chairman of the First International Conference Science, Physics, and Education, Ed Professor Aris Doyan, MSE, PhD, who has uh, given me the opportunity to be a keynote speaker. Who I respect, uh, moderator, Dr. Renat Kosim, MSE. I respect uh, keynote speaker, Professor Dr. Dr. Anas Edi Isiono, MSE, and Professor Dr. Johnny Rohmat, MSE. I respect all keynote speaker. I respect the seminar participant. Uh, allow me to deliver a presentation entitled Innovation and Creation on Physics Education in COVID-19 uh, pandemic era. <clears throat> uh, as we know today, education is uh, directed at uh, 20 first century skill, some of which uh, we know uh, creative thinking skill, critical thinking skill, collaboration skill, uh, communication skill, uh, as we know, uh, 4C. This is, of course, uh, demand of a change in education, the need for competency today certainly need to adapt to the development of this era to achieve this skill uh, learning in the era of the industrial revolution uh, for need to be directed so that education is directed by the student themselves, multi-source uh, learning, 
lifelong learning, ICT based learning, adaptive learning, and uh, building um, a mindset. Uh, to achieve for C in this era, there is the challenge of living face to face in class due to, due to COVID-19. Uh, uh, because of that, innovation and uh, creativity in education and research are needed. In uh, this presentation, uh, about RND uh, during uh, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic era, what I and team have been doing in the last two years. They are optimizing M learning to stimulate uh, HOTS, uh, developing STEM-based interactive M module and multimedia, uh, developing STEM project-based learning strategies and workshop to accommodate uh, learning style and prior knowledge and reducing differences in scientific reasoning and argumentation uh, performance on renewable energy material. There are a total of uh, five research and development, the result of which will be briefly uh, described uh, here. Uh, in the developing this learning material, uh, characteristic of IT based learning are okay. very important, such as uh, uh, teaching material and learning. Excuse me, uh, Prof. Yeah. A slide show, please. Uh, slide show. Okay. 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 Uh, okay. Uh, the IT based learning characteristic, like uh, helping uh, learning activities, strengthen the learning experience, makes learning experience meaningful emphasize uh, the learning uh, process and then uh, uh, make a learning experience for student <coughs> and presenting applicable uh, learning activities. Uh, this is the methods in developing teaching material and learning strategies i use uh, adi model uh, which include the stage of analyze design development uh, implementation and evaluation activities each stage uh, activity is controlled for uh, suitability if a uh, discrepancy is found, it will be uh, revised. The product design is then uh, validity by expert and uh, practitioner. Uh, validation test uh, cover uh, content construction, design, uh, readability, and easy op operation. The trial design use a uh, pre-test, post-test, uh, control group uh, design. Data uh, analyzed using pair sample t-test, independent sample t-test, and gain uh, effect size, especially for strategy and a worksheet development using a one-way ANOVA. <clears throat> uh, this is 
slide uh, describe the model of mobile learning optimization. Uh, the topic studied uh, uh, DC current, alternating current, uh, static electricity. Uh, each topic is equipped uh, with a purpose, interactive module, uh, videos, hyperlink to other source, uh, interactive simulation, and uh, worksheet. Uh, the learning stage uh, consists of observation, asking question, collecting data, uh, conclusion, and communication uh, the result. Uh, the learning activities uh, provide include uh, discussion, uh, assignment, uh, virtual experiment, reading modules, and quiz. Uh, the result of M learning development. Based on the test result, it is known that M learning products are very practical to use. The result of the effectiveness test showed that the average, average hot of the experimental class was higher than the control class. Uh, learning outcome increased significantly at the 95% uh, confidence level. The end gain reached the high category which was uh, 0 0.71, effect size uh, 0 0.27 is in the medium category. Uh, the conclusion about optimizing M-learning, M-learning with a stage of learning activities according to a scientific approach and learning resources uh, best time presented in the form of hyperlink, uh, simulation, animation, and videos of physical phenomena can stimulate uh, hops. This is uh, the A-module model using STEM approach with the aim of stimulating uh, hops. The module study three topic, hydrostatic pressure, uh, Pascal law and uh, Archimedes law, and capillarity and viscosity. Each module has a main systematic objective, uh, main material, uh, physics, phenomena, uh, videos, uh, formative test, uh, summary, reflection, uh, simulation uh, practicum. Each topic is presented with a STEM approach. The learning activities prepare include uh, discussion, uh, project making, experiment, assignment, uh, formative test, and uh, reflection. This slide saw the test result of the implementation of a model development. Uh, based on the test result, it is known that a module product are very uh, practice to use. Uh, the result of the effectiveness test saw that average uh, hot of the experimental class was uh, higher than control class. Uh, learning outcome increased significantly at the 95% uh, confidence level. The end grain uh, reached a high category, which was uh, 0 0.76. Uh, the conclusion about interactive module, the Interactive a module that can stimulate hot has a complete presentation systematic 
including concept map, learning guide, uh, material presentation, uh, summaries, uh, formative test, reflection, uh, summative evaluation, the module material contain text, image, uh, YouTube link, animation and simulation, and has uh, uh, has content for uh, analyzing, evaluating, creating activities uh, presented using STEM approach. Uh, this is the multimedia model using STEM approach with the aim of uh, stimulating hubs. The multimedia, uh, the topic, uh, energy, renewable energy, hydropower, wind energy, uh, wind power system. Multimedia, uh, present text, audio, video, animation, uh, simulation. Uh, the science component uh, present the concept of energy potential, uh, kinetic energy, uh, paraday laws. Uh, the technology component present uh, hydropower plant technology, wind power technology, uh, the engineering component uh, present the hydropower and uh, wind power plan uh, work principle. The mathematical component uh, present the formulation covered by the uh, power plan. Uh, this slide saw the test result of the implementation of uh, multimedia development. Based on the test result, it is known that multimedia products are very practical to use. The result of the effectiveness test saw that the average hot of the experimental class was uh, higher than the control class. Uh, learning outcome increased significantly at the 75% confidence level. The end gain reached medium category, which was uh, 0.67 and effect size 0.47 in medium category. <clears throat> the conclusion of uh, research on multimedia development are multimedia that uh, can stimulate hot has a systemic systematic presentation uh, such as reflection, uh, development, discovery, application, uh, communication in the form of text, image, uh, videos, animation, uh, and experiment uh, simulation. Uh, this is the model of uh, strategy. The study aimed to develop a valid and practical STEM project-based learning strategy to accommodate uh, learning style and prior knowledge and to reduce differences in scientific reasoning and argumentation uh, performance. A student will have good scientific uh, reasoning and argumentation performance if the teacher can create learning strategies that can uh, facilitate uh, learning style and the level of initial knowledge posed by a student. Uh, to reduce uh, differences in scientific reasoning and argumentation performance uh, between students, must direct uh, learning to growth of scientific reasoning and argumentation uh, performance of students while still paying attention to their uh, learning style. The implementation of uh, STEM in the learning process will be maximized with the use of appropriate uh, learning model. One of the learning models that are suitable for STEM is the uh, project-based learning uh, integrated with uh, STEM approach. Uh, there are 
six stage of learning in this strategy uh, reflection research discovery application and communication form of strategy is to analyze real life problem with deduction uh, induction and analogy and the research uh, component exploring by utilizing a technology in the discovery component uh, student are uh, directed to the sign uh, to design finding uh, scientifically in the application component experiment with scientific procedure were carried out in the communication uh, component students are asked to make a presentation as question and argumentation excuse me prop the yeah. time oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. Uh, just two slides. Result of strategy development. Uh, you can see on the screen. And this is the conclusion of the yes. strategy development. Thank you very much. Okay. Is it finished? Okay, you are welcome. Thank Professor Agus for your nice presentation. And next, we will hear presentation from Professor Eddie Istiono. Please, Professor Istiono, time is yours. Thank you, moderator. Dr. Yeah. Retnan Kasim, MSc. Okay, thank you. You are welcome. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, we say thank you to Allah who has given us help so that uh, we can attend this seminar. Uh, the Honorable Chairman of this seminar committee, the Honorable Dr. Aris Tuyan, invite me to the to be a uh, keynote speaker in this seminar. Also, my friend, Prof. Agus, Prof. Joni. Good morning, my everyone. Good morning. Yes. Morning. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to my presentation. Mati. Okay. Uh, as you can see on the yeah. screen, Permit on slides our slides. topic, you can use slides now. Uh, okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, my topic: computer based assessment as a good solution on learning physics during the pandemic of COVID-19. The COVID-19 yeah. pandemic yeah. has significantly affected the uh, career. Yeah, I mean. uh, the world of education should adapt uh, to circumstances and demand uh, of the development uh, of science and technology. Yeah. Uh, since March 2020, national teaching and learning activity in school and in college are conducted online. The change of face-to-face -face learning into online learning certainly makes learning cannot run optimally. But in the term of learning process and the assessment of learning, Result. Assessment of learning in school is carried out of uh, teaching subject, including physics. Assessment of physics learning conducted online using many ranges of media or methods, such as using Google Form, computer based test, GPT and computerized adaptive test can. 
is on the background how to assess the learning of physics during the COVID-19 pandemic. Is the use of Google Form, CPT, and CAD effectively employed as an assessment of basic learning during COVID-19 pandemic? Physics has identified as a process and the same time a product. So in the learning, should consider effectively and efficient learning. to find uh, uh, the success of students' basic learning outcome, it should be assessed. In the context of learning assessment, mean set much information about student learning processes and outcome in order to determine the decision that need to be made in learning. The calling of various information about student analysis and interpretation of data and information collected. Interpretation of the result, pull up of the resulting decision, and assessment are conducted on an ongoing basis. The COVID-19 pandemic that has hit the world, including Indonesia, cause change in the media, technologies, and methods of assessment of physics learning. Physics learning assessment in pandemic time are directed at online or computer-based assessment. For example, using Google Form, computer-based test, and Okay, let us now turn to the next slide. Google Form is one component of Google Talk therapies that is frequently used on medicine, even recreation, opinion tribe, and so on. Particularly with academic setting, Google Form can be used to conduct online quizzes to face about the effectiveness of learning, for like open, for like uh, open question answer. Feature the Google form can be shared with offer openly or specially with Google account owners with accessibility options such as read only and can read only or editable can edit a document. Uh, advantage of using Google Form, interesting of template. Second, offering many type of states which are friendly selected. Respondent can provide immediately responses wherever they are. The form is responsive. The result were analysis automatically, directly, can be used and solved with others. Computer based test. The rapid advancement of science technology, especially in the field of information technology. The implementation of test using CPT, the supervision setting, instrument delivery, delivery, assessment and analysis of testing, parameters, as well as testing process. The development of CPT falls five skill operation. The development it is and a question bank, assembly and a composition of the tank, the question and scheduling of the test tickets, the provision of tests, 
the post examination process of test result. Unlike CPT, CAT can be defined as test with without rate item random. But according to the ability to measure students' intelligence, that is cognitive test and is often used to develop countries because it is able to adapt to the participants' ability to utilize item response theory. CAT uh, developed uh, based on item response theory, IIT. Yeah. If the individual test taker answer a lot of correct, correctly, it will be given a set of more difficult problem points. Con con conversely, if answer a lot of wrong, it will be begun, it, it will be given a set of sheer question, uh, low uh, index, uh, difficult index. And then this process repeat itself until the test is the same and the level intelligence of the participant is estimated. To develop CAD, con require evaluation on six components. Model, item response theory, IRT, item question bank, initial item selection, capacity, capability level restoration method, item selection procedure, dismissal. Now I'd like to discuss method. The study was conducted in 2019, 2020, and 2021. The response, the response, uh, the were senior high school students, Sutton, uh, spread across several cities in Yogyakarta. The analysis data uh, of instrument or uh, valid Concept of validity of instrument, estimation of relativity, review uh, assessment media, determining ability of student, uh, effectiveness of assessment. Online learning is not new in the world of education because the gain of learning is an alternative learning practice that can be done. Online learning become part of alternative learning solution in pandemic era. First, online learning is more practice and relaxing. Second, more flexibility can be done anytime and anywhere. It's more practical and easier to take new lead value. Students can be monitored and accompanied by their parents. Teacher and student, okay. teacher and student can you experiment related to online learning. Not only in line, online learning, online assessment also has relatively similar advances. Assessment is physical learning conducted online become the main alternative to assessment during the pandemic. In addition to preventing the spread and treating the COVID-19 pandemic, online assessment allow 
assessment to be more practical and efficient in achievement learning goal. Even the, so, uh, it is unenabled that online learning and assessment led to other unexpected impacts, such as organ or less student in motivation because the learning environment and less focus. The this Google form in physics assessment has been widely done. So that uh, the utilization of Google form application is seen as effective in supervising and assessment learning activities in the physics study program in Makassar State University. Other research saw the use of Google Form application based online as a written test to the learn physics during COVID-19 pandemic is effective and improve learners' learning ability. The effectiveness of utilizing Google Form application based online is a written test to uh, is reaped from the ability of test learners to get a fitness a fit, a fit score uh, 67 and to post score 60. This result is increased. Another medium beside uh, Google Form this uh, assessment in basic learning during pandemic is CPT. Uh, we uh, develop CPT to measure uh, representation mathematics, rep mathematical representation, and verbal and representation. Our research relative to the development of instrument to assess the basic problem solving ability of CPT, so uh, is a development validity and a good quality. For example, I use CPT assessment uh, basic learning the present feature. Advances of CPT include improving standard design, exchanging the CPT reduction papers used, improving the display capability, and minimizing measure error. Uh, student health ability uh, 4.7, very low, 37 low, uh, 60 medium is high and life and very high. The next, uh, basic learning assessment medium is CAT. The cat with atom response theory and polytomous item. According to him, the use of cat as an effort to the test get out are not too difficult and too easy. Too easy. The test will be more optimally fed with IRT. By using IRT item parameter do not depend on class ability. Self ability doesn't depend on sample. We developed the basic critical thinking skill test using that uh, beside on the item response theory. The results of uh, that all valid item 
and visit MSP value from 4.8 to 1.2. The decibel index range from minus 4.6 to 1.3. This is a good item typical index. Information function and standard error of measurement. So the physics grid is, is suitable for mission student critical thinking skill from minus 1.8 to 1.5. The real field score is 0.7. Uh, Okay. The feature uh, student ability calculation graph. In CAT, the piece, in CAT piece item responsibility, the computer not only move the problem item uh, into the computer, but the computer is set to select and present problem item according to the estimate level of ability of the test taker. Excuse me, Prof. Eddie. Yes. Oh, conclusion. Okay. Okay, go on. Yeah. Okay, my conclusion, the COVID-19 pandemic has prompted a change in the mechanism of assessment in physics learning to computer this assessment. Second, some of the media used to conduct assessment, such as Google Form, computer piece test, PPT, and computer adaptive test CAD, are effectively used in basic learning assessment during the COVID-19 pandemic. Okay, that is uh, the end of my presentation. Okay. Listen the time to moderator, Dr. Rednan Tasik. Over to okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Edi Istiono, for your nice presentation. Maybe uh, let's start with Professor Johnny Rahmat. Please, Prof. Time is yours. Remember, 20 minutes from now. It's yours. Uh, the keynote speaker can open a uh, chatting. There are several questions in their chat. Okay, Mr. John. It okay, Mr. John. Maybe there is a technical problem. We wait for a moment. It's okay. 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 
ada nih. Mr. Johnny, not yet. The sound I cannot hear. The audience, do you hear the sound speak from Prop Johnny? No, sir. No, sir. Maybe the volume, you must be good. Yes. Ah, okay. So, Oke, okay, please. Oke, okay. okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you, the moderator, uh, Akang Kosim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, the Honorable to keynote speakers in the session. Akang Agus Suyatna from uh, Karawang. And then the second one is Professor Edi Istiono uh, as my friend. Alhamdulillah, uh, this morning this morning I I'll to I'm going to present my paper entitled Cosmetic Learning Model, Conceptual Discussion, and PSA and Hot Improvement in Physic Learning. Uh, in this presentation, there are four main uh, discussion. Uh, first, uh, firstly, I'll, uh, I'm sorry, but that's slow. Ada dah. Oke. Okay. Alhamdulillah, many many objection for me. Uh, I start my presentation. The title, Causality Learning Model, Conceptual Discussion, and PSA and Hot Improvement in Physics Learning. In this paper, I want to introduce uh, the new model, new learning model, uh, and I want to uh, show its relation with conceptual discussion and improvement of PSA and HOTS. As I mentioned before, I will to discuss uh, four main uh, problems. Firstly, I will to show uh, the condition of our student achievement in Indonesia, and then how worry our student uh, when uh, facing the final exam, especially national exam, and third. Uh, briefly, so portion of conceptual concept uh, tool discussion and the use of uh, mathematic formula, formula. And the last, I want to introduce uh, the model of learning. This I saw the result of PISA and teams for Indonesia and some other countries. Uh, PISA means a program international of student assessment carried out by the Organization for Economic Corporation Development. And teams uh, is the trend in international mathematics and science study. Uh, from PISA in 2018, 
it shows that uh, in Indonesia experience a decrease in score in every field in reading, math, and science. This problem, big problem for us. And then uh, this is a uh, source the reading mathematics and science are in on international average the score is uh, almost 495 while for indonesian student uh, below 400 And then uh, about improving education from the OE, OECD average, the score is 489. Uh, it's in level three. And then, uh, I mean, while in Indonesia, only 396. This diagram uh, shows how high China uh, improving education. The score is an uh, almost uh, 600, 590, 97, uh, 590, I mean 590 in level four, while Indonesia only in level 1A. And then uh, this uh, diagram. So proportion of high skill employees in labor force and student with realistic and ambitious expectation. You can see success Russia, uh, Canada, Singapore, Israel, Japan. Uh, the percentage of high achieving students who expect to complete tertiary education for those uh, five countries, about for, uh, 60% until all 50% until 60%. While in Indonesia, the percentage only uh, about nine percent this very very uh, bad for us then percentage percentage of employed adults with tertiary education for those uh, countries about 30 until 60 percent while in Indonesia, only about 5%. Then uh, this picture, I want to show, just show how worry the final year secondary student uh, for facing uh, national examination. Very, very worry. And then uh, this diagram, briefly, uh, identification about the portion of concept question and formula application. Based on the indicator structure, the problem is in concept form is given a portion of up to 60%, but the wrong habit has eliminated 40% of its potential. And finally, uh, the concept almost only 20%, while mathematic equation application until 80%. This is the phenomena uh, question from national 
examination 2019. The results, teachers tend to train students to be skilled in using mathematical formulas that rather than understanding physical concepts. In line with this, students tend to learn physics how to use physics formula rather than reading long conceptual explanation. Students prefer books that present briefly explanation of concept with a lot of practice problem in form of formula application. This our uh, Ministry of Education and Culture of Indonesia, Mr. Nadim Anwar Makarim. He believes that the elimination of national exam in Indonesia will free teachers and schools more in assessing the success of education in their environment. And I uh, not for things. The learning design is more flexible and will be open thinking. The third, meaningful learning. Sorry. The meaningful learning based on concept. And the fourth, development of HOTS. Think critically, creatively, and doing reasoning. And all of those, the final goal is problem solving ability. So I just uh, saw that problem solving ability is the final task, final objective of, of us. And now, uh, what I want to introduce to you, the new learning model, I name it causalitic. We call it causalitic learning model, or briefly abbreviated as CLM. Uh, the model will increase the ability to think creatively, critically, and to reason, and finally be able to solve problem. And I saw, uh, I'll show to you, uh, there are six characteristics of the CLM. First, the learning model uses of a phenomenon with more than one possible answer. Secondly, uh, identi identifying causal factors and predicting effects potentially occur deductively. Third, student ask for to compile arguments to explain how the condition of its cause, uh, cause element are so that the predicted effects occurs. The fourth, prioritizing prioritizing a conceptual discussion rather than verifying mathematical equation with a ratio of 75% to 25%. The fifth, the model has four syntax. Firstly, orientation. Secondly, exploration and development of concept of causality. The third, argument development and the last evaluation. Six, HOTS, higher thinking skill and developed, such as critical thinking, creative thinking, and the ability to reason. This all of the characteristic of uh, the causality learning model. This model has been applied in 2015 until 2020. Exactly uh, 
until future. In three universities in Mataram, Indonesia, on kinematics, Newton's law of motion, work and energy, impulse and momentum, gravity, rigid body equilibrium, and thermodynamics. And uh, it also have been applied in seven small high school in Mataram, Lombok Tengah, Indonesia, and six uh, subjects, subjects on fluids, optical geometry, impulse and momentum, heat, rigid body equilibrium, and the last uh, direct current. <clears throat> And now I just, just want to show that uh, this model is supported by the data. Uh, this are uh, 21 tables which show the hypothesis examination and part of them uh, show the respond of student about this causality learning model. The hypothesis examination about two things. The first about the uh, problem solving ability and the second about higher order thinking, <clears throat> especially for uh, thinking critically thinking creatively and uh, to reason. I just want to show the table because if I uh, discuss one by one, uh, will take many, many times. <clears throat> yes. The table five presented the PSA indicator that increase significantly and the normal scan difference that significant between low and high group student for each subject. This uh, in a university on uh, seven subjects. Table six, achievement in percentage. Table seven shows uh, achievement in percentage indicator problem solving ability and its afraid of the senior high school student and its normalized gain of all the six subjects <clears throat> and so on. And this is the uh, hypothesis test for one of the uh, HOTS, precisely in creativity. Excuse me, Mr. Johnny. Yes. A little bit fast. Okay, okay. Because the time is- Two minutes. Limited. Yeah, two minutes again. And I will show you uh, in the causal, causality learning model, I, uh, I have, six causal model, four basic causal, and two uh, combined model. This one, four basic causal model, uh, A, simple causal model, B, divergent causal model, C, convergent causal model, and D, chain causal model, and the two last, combined causal model, consisted of two types. The first, simple combined causal model and chain combined causal model. So all of the model uh, is six. And this one, uh, example of the model, causal model in uh, form of physics uh, phenomenon. This one as the simple causal model, simple causal model, 
one uh, of one uh, cause result in one effects and then this is this example of convergent causal model uh, <clears throat> more than one there one uh, cause causes result in only one effects and then this is the example of chain causal model and next the example of phenomenon with a simple composite causal model and the last chain composite causal model i think that's all thank you uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Oke, okay. thank you Mr. Prof. Johnny. I think before we continue to discuss uh, the all keynote speaker can open the chatting. Uh, there are several question maybe to uh, Prof. Agus and Prof. Edi. Next, maybe for Mr. Johnny, also it is, I read, uh, it is, uh, there is a question. Okay, maybe for, in this uh, discussion session, this Mr. I, I call prop uh, first prop Agus ya. Yeah? Yes, I'm ready. Okay. Have you opened? Yes. Uh, maybe you can direct uh, answer. Okay. 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 Good. Thank you. Please. Uh, uh, the first uh, question uh, from Pak Husno Puadi. Yeah. Thank you for the question. And the answer, and the answer uh, because for you, also for uh, Vienni, from Vienni, I also uh, answer the first question from uh, Vienni. Uh, I think the development of physical education can use AD or for uh, depending on what is uh, being developed and the purpose of development, uh, as well as the uh, research time we have. Uh, the basic difference at the uh, between AD and 4D uh, at the initial stage is that uh, AD performs on in uh, depth need analysis. Analysis. Yeah, need analysis and the uh, 4D model because uh, must uh, use a dissemination stage. Of course, uh, dissemination can only be done after uh, making sure that the product developed is effective and practical. Uh, of course, it uh, takes more time. The second question from uh, Hidayat. Hidayatullah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the software that uh, used to create a mobile learning is uh, Moodle, uh, combined with WhatsApp to communicate with the student. The M learning that I develop uh, operates by smartphones. Yes. And the third question from Ibu Siti Nur Aziza. I agree with you with your statement that online learning uh, makes students uh, less active. Otherwise, the learning media used is interesting. Uh, my experience in dealing with uh, student activity problem is to first convince a student that the material uh, being studied is uh, very important and useful for student. Uh, the second, uh, control the all activity of the student. And 
they know that we control and assess all activities of the student uh, through uh, LMS. Uh, the answer uh, for Bu Yeni, uh, of uh, the research that I do is uh, not doing alone, but in collaboration with uh, postgraduate student. Uh, the first challenge is that a student work uh, very slowly <laughs> and scan uh, output reputable Scopus Index Journal. That's uh, the challenge for me. Uh, to Ibu Hikmawati. Hikmawati, banyak sekali. Uh, research on ethnoscience is very interesting and uh, in demand for publication in international journals, uh, Scopus Index, because it has a, a peculiarity that other countries uh, do not have. I think that's all. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, maybe you can rest before uh, because um, maybe the other people say uh, still thinking to make a question. Okay. Oh. Thank you, bro. <laughs> thank you, bro. Yeah. Uh, there I think other are... people uh, read the chat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I'm sorry. I, I I give a chance or to prop Eddie. Okay, thank you. Oh. Uh, thank you, my student. Yeah, uh, please, Mr. Eddie. He is my student. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, thank okay. you. You uh, will do In order to be stable, respondent size for one PL, one parameter logistic, uh, is difficulty index or P is 250. Uh, for two PL, difficulty index and decrease discriminant A is 500. And three PL, difficulty index, discriminant, and C2 casing C, 750. Okay, I have one question, uh, pa, pa Sim. Yeah. Okay. Um, have you have you answered uh, to Mr. Eddie Istiono? Which of the following Google form CBT and CAT can be used uh, you to assess aspect of student skills? Have you read it? What? Uh, Prof. Mawati. Oh. Yeah. About which of the following Google form, mm -hmm. CBT and CAT, can mm -hmm. be used to assess aspect of student skills? Yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Saya lihat layar jadi. Yes. Thank okay. you. Uh, in the pan <coughs> in the COVID pandemic, uh, uh, we can use Google uh, use, uh, online yeah, online yes, yes. <laughs> media. Uh, yeah. <coughs> yeah. yeah. Simple is a uh, Google form. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, then. Most uh, difficult is most difficult to develop is to uh, is a uh, cat. I think uh, three me three media can use to measure uh, ability of student. Okay. Is that the answer? Okay. Ah. The next ID uh, from Jenny. What kind of the test can be applied in CBT? Okay. And is there any comparison of the effective effectiveness of students' assessment result 
before pandemic and during the pandemic while using CBT. Okay. Good. Please. Uh, uh, <clears throat> type of uh, item. Uh, I use uh, multiple choice with uh, reason. And <clears throat> I not yet uh, compare effectiveness uh, okay. in pandemic and not pandemic. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Teacher okay. time. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, you can rest. I want to continue to Mr. Johnny. There are several questions for you. Uh, first from Aris Doyan, from Bos. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, look at. Do you think if you want to master the concept of physics, should we start by giving the problem first or give the cause of the problem? What about the relationship with the causalitic model? Please, you can answer. Sorry. Okay, thank you. I have not uh, two questions. First, from Husnul Fuati, and secondly, from Associate Professor Arsdoyan. One question, but actually uh, consists of three questions. First, could we start by giving the problem first uh, or giving the cause of the problem? Uh, I'm sorry. Do you think if you want to master the concept of physics, should we start by giving the problem first or give the cause of the problem? Maybe any uh, relation for the first? Is it right or no? Okay. Uh, I want to tell you that there are many, many models of learning. Of course, not uh, one of them as the, as the, the, the best model. model. Yes. Every model has a special, special uh, use, maybe. And in uh, condition, special condition, maybe uh, better use a special model. That's one. I, so I can say that uh, the causality learning model is not the best of the all model. model. Next. Uh, okay. so, uh, should we start, start by giving the problems first? Uh, that's one, one of the strategy. We can also ask for students to explore by themselves, to explore as far as uh, wide as possible when give a, a task, a special task. But in my model, I start with a phenomenon, uh, which is in the phenomenon, I uh, provide any condition and I say in uh, statistically, there are uh, uh, independent variable and dependent variable. Independent variable, I say as uh, the cause, then independent variable as uh, the effects. And in this phenomenon, uh, I use, uh, use the uh, cause which has more than one condition. And every condition uh, will be uh, a special effect. I'm sorry. So this is bad in, in my here. Ajahn, go on to that very bad. Go on to question from Fuad, from Husnul Fuad. I think it is enough. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, from Husnul Fuadi, maybe I want to share 
and now yes as my student is in postgraduate uh, student and they ask me please direct uh, to the question <laughs> just this i can uh, okay, okay. really okay. display uh, okay. the question yeah Okay, has okay. already explained that participants in Indonesia are weak in terms of the concept. Does this indicate that the concept of the teacher is also weak because yes. the student weak? <laughs> <That's it. Yes. laughs> okay, please you can yes. explain that. Okay, as I uh, give an example here, I saw this <coughs> two uh, electrical charges the first is positive and the second is negative mm -hmm. and i saw a student to give how the points uh, having zero potential will be from what what's from and in two weeks no one can give a uh, the answer until now maybe yes uh, even the answer is very very far from what i expect in this condition the exact uh, answer is the form is a uh, plan plan uh, in the if i say the uh, this one is the x axis and this one vertical is y axis and then uh, z axis is here uh, uh, that's mean a student weak particular. yes yeah yes. i mean uh, you can say that uh, indonesian student is weak in score yes. ability yes, yes. example yeah yes uh, it is it is uh, it's so uh, the teacher also weak of That's course, perfect. yes, of course. If, if they, but uh, during the uh, teach, also uh, uh, gradually they can also improve their mastery in concept. Yeah, so where they start to solve this problem? If we, uh, <laughs> is it right, uh, Fuad? Yeah, your question. Maybe you can, uh, yes, start. Uh, from where to where? Yes. First, uh, to be used to uh, reading a books with uh, explanation, last explanation uh, of concepts, not only uh, derivating in uh, mathematical formula. I think so. Such as uh, in physics, written by David Halliday. Okay. I think enough, John. Okay. Uh, this is one question again for you from Dikmawati. Yeah. Can this new learning model be modified with the recommended STEM-based learning model? And what are the obstacles that will be experienced by teacher and student who will apply this causal learning model? Maybe you can. <laughs> okay, okay. The obstacle in the use of this model is first, uh, it takes a long time because the student is not used to to use this uh, model. So in uh, application, I ask for my student, especially in research, before taking the data, uh, make a uh, <coughs> I mean, pre, pre learning uh, this model uh, in practice before in the real uh, learning. Yeah. yeah, maybe this is there is STEM model science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, and relationship with a causal model. Can we uh, mix? Yes. Our... yes. Yes, uh, I said that uh, the model can be uh, created with uh, okay. 
whatever as can integrate. As I plan uh, in the next, I'm going to integrate the characteristic value of student okay, thank with you, this Mr. model. One question again from Yeni. <clears throat> no, good morning, Mr. Johnny. I'm really excited. What is ABT? Add causality. Uh, about about causality. In your opinion, can all physics learning topic use a causality learning model? And what are the challenges you have while doing this research? Yes. So all topic can be used causality model or not at not all. The first challenge in the use is this model is how to developing the instrument. Mm. Phenomenon or uh, practice problem for student as the challenge, okay. including the, when we can be integrated into others. Okay, I think enough. Yeah, it is enough. Is Thank it? You. Okay. Uh, I remember the keynote speaker. Please, uh, you can write the form. You can. Uh, yeah, there is a form for keynote speaker. Don't forget to, to fill. Okay. Uh, this session, in this session, many uh, participants interest to your topic. So uh, I think the time is over. For uh, I said thank you for all keynote speaker and uh, participant that this uh, session finished. Yeah. Therefore, we give applause for all part, uh, keynote speaker and for all uh, this session. Thank you very much, and I say. We say Alhamdulillah, we can Alhamdulillah. Uh, to meet in the, we can meet in the other uh, seminar. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, this I come back to the committee. Thank you very much. to all of the keynote speakers. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our main room of International Conference, ICSPE 2021. And I would like to say thanks to all of the keynote speakers today who can attend this uh, meetings. Ladies and gentlemen, now we're going to our last sections of keynote speakers. It will be delivered by two persons. The first one is Christine Pueblo Abo, PhD. 
from Sultan Kudra Kudra from Sultan Kudarat State University Philippines and the second one will be delivered by Dr. Gunawan MPD from University of Mataram Indonesia. Ladies and gentlemen, these two keynote speakers will be delivered a very good research and will be led by Igusti Ngurah Yudi Handayana MSc as the moderator today. So ladies and gentlemen, please stay tuned on your laptop. Please rename your ID also. And then we're going to our last section of keynote speakers. Thank you. Very well, thank you very much, Miss Nina. Um, is my voice clear? Okay. Um, good morning, everyone, ladies and gentlemen. Um, welcome again for to the first international conference, Science, Physics, and Education, 2021. Um, I'm Agustin Rahyudi Handayana. Will conduct you to the last. Okay, not speaker session. And for now, we have two keynote speakers. There are Christine Pueblo Abu, PhD, from Sultan Kudara State University, Philippines. And the second one is Dr. Gunawan, MPD, from University of Mataram. Uh, for Dr. Christine, have you joined with us? Yes, sir. Good, good morning. Good, good morning. morning. Very well. Uh, I'm Dr. loud and Christine. clear, sir. Yeah, your face is clear. And okay, thank, thank you, you so very much, much, doctor. How are you today, doctor? Doing great. In spite of the pandemic that we are experiencing, actually, it's not only in the Philippines, but then the, the entire world, for sure. Okay, very well. Nice to meet you, doctor. Yeah. Okay, and I think uh, Dr. Gunawan will be joined with us uh, later in uh, his uh, session. So uh, we will start uh, the first talk from Dr. Christine. And let me introduce Dr. Christine first. She is the Vice President of for Academic Affairs, Sultan Kudarat State University. And also she a uh, lecturer in graduate school faculty, Sultan Kudarat State University also lecturer in College of Teacher Education Faculty, Sultan Kudarat State University, EGC Montilla, Takurong City, Sultan Kudarat, Philippines. Dr. Christine will uh, talk about virtual learning in the new normal of physics education, the interesting topic, I think. So, Dr. Christine, if you are ready, table is yours. Okay. Again, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for the invitation, uh, for being part of this uh, significant event uh, that is really happening in Lombok, Indonesia. So my today's topic is, of course, the virtual learning in the new normal of the physics education. The outline of my presentation, I will discuss the background of the study, the theoretical background, the statement of the problem, the methodology, results and findings, and of course, the conclusion. Soxargen region, this is the region 12 in the Philippines, or named as Soxargen, that is located in the south central Mindanao. It is composed of the four provinces, namely South Cotabato, Cotabato, Sultan Kudarat, and Sarangani, as well as the five cities, namely the General Santos, Cotabato, Coronadal, Takurong, and Kidapawan. We have to take into consideration the challenges in teaching physics amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. It cannot be denied that it's not only in the Philippines that we are experiencing such, but of course in other countries. So some of these challenges is of course, first there is we have no face-to-face -face classes. Due to COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we are all discouraged to conduct face-to-face -face classes wherein all classes are done online or with the use of the module for the DepEd. Um, and we have also no laboratory materials or apparatus 
The thing that I want to emphasize here, no laboratory material, since the students are just doing their activities at home, and therefore they have no access to the laboratory that we have in the university. And no access of the library. Instead of going to the library, taking a look at the different books related to physics, this time it's all online. It is all ebooks, electronic books that we are giving our students. And in order for them to access all the references online. And of course, we can also say that there is no stable internet connectivity in the region. As you can see, with the strength of the internet connectivity, there are 39.6, there's only 13.6% wherein they are really stating that we really have a poor internet connectivity in the Philippines. And 26.8 for satisfactory and 27.1% are saying to have good. Of course, the internet connectivity that I am referring to is only the internet connectivity that we have in the South Surgeon region, specifically in Sultan Kudarat. And of course, we have also the yes or the challenges in terms of the uh, conduct of the physics classes amidst the COVID-19. Yes, it is really true that all classes are conducted virtually. We are using the different modes mode of conduct of classes. We are using the Google Classroom, the Zoom meeting, the Facebook, the Google Meet in order to access our students and all, all are done online. So online transactions are conducted because of the border restrictions. As you've noticed in our region, there is a border restrictions in order to guard all the community or the individuals in their respective community to avoid the COVID-19 cases and to minimize, of course, the increasing number of these uh, cases that we have in the region. And there is also a need of these technological devices. Of course, right away, right now, there is indeed a very uh, high demand in terms of these technological devices that we have just to sustain the quality learning or the quality learning delivery that we have. Of course, uh, we are very independent uh, uh, with the uh, students are learning independently right now. And but of course, we can also say that we are internet dependent. Virtual classes cannot be made possible, online transactions cannot be made possible without the internet connectivity. So for the theoretical background, of course, this study is just simply focusing on the three, the scaffolding theory, the constructivism, and the 21st century learning skills. For the scaffolding theory, of course, we all know that scaffolding is one of the style and instructions that provides students with academic support to function at the cutting edge of their individual development. The scaffolding instruction is a teaching strategy originates from Lee Vygotsky, social, social cultural theory and its concept of zone of proximal development. As to the role of the teachers, of course, and other supports in the learner's development and providing support structures to get the students to their next level. And the example of the techniques that we are using or conducting in the conduct of this uh, online or virtual classes. So, of course, we do give feedback, the giving hints to our students, making instructions for them to have to follow the procedures and every test that we are giving them, make explanations, a sort of modeling, of course, and the art of questioning is very important as well. And constructivism, it is a theory of education that recognizes learners construct new understandings and knowledge integrating with what they already know. This includes knowledge gained 
prior to entering the school. It is very important that in the different uh, situations that we have right now, it is very important to somehow tickle the minds or the critical thinking of our students, even though they we are not conducting a face-to-face -face classes, but we also ensure that there is somehow improvement or evolution as to the understanding of our students from no conceptions to, uh, from misconceptions to a new or correct conceptions. And some of this uh, sample strategies that we implement in the school are of course the practical work or the hands-on experiment, even though they are doing that at home, but of course we have this, uh, monitoring scheme that the students can still do the practical works or the hands-on experiments or shall I say a home-based uh, activity where they will just make use of what are available in the surroundings or within their area and of course we have also this uh, computer simulations wherein students are somehow doing virtual simulation activities uh, specifically with the use of this spec in order for the students to have a clearer concept and understanding of the different uh, physics concepts. And we have also to put into consideration the 21st century learning skills. So this is very important and then this is very uh, uh, important to bear in mind that this time, this century is, of course, uh, we really have to consider the four C's that we call it. First, we have the communication, collaboration, critical thinking, and creativity. With the virtual learning that we have, it is very important that in spite of the distance, in spite of the conduct of the classes virtually, communication or sharing of thoughts, questions, and solutions must be clear to both the students and that of the teachers. There must be also a collaboration, or that is working together to reach a goal, putting talent, the expertise, and smart to work. So in this uh, thing, it is really the IT experts that are usually being taught by the faculty or to make collaborations with in order for them to somehow have a clear grasp or understanding as to the manipulations of the different uh, gadgets or whatever uh, technology that we have right now. And of course, the third C, which is the critical thinking, wherein it is looking at the problem in a new way, linking learning across subjects and disciplines. So in this, in this case, it is not only that the learning, the physics concepts that we have are just simply based from the books, but somehow it is already trying to relate this physics concept to their daily activities that they are doing while studying at home. And the last is of course, creativity. They are trying to have new, uh, uh, adjust or adopt with the new approaches just to get things done, wherein there are a lot of innovations that is really happening in within the virtual learning, and of course, some sort of invention as well. So as emphasized here, all in one real world, integrated project delivered in the classroom. But this time, of course, it is conducted in a virtual setting. Okay. The statement of the problem. I have only two statement of the problem. First is, what are the experiences in using the common technological devices in conducting the virtual classes? And second, how do technological devices affect the virtual teaching performance of physics teachers? Okay, the methodology. So who are the respondents of this study? Of course, the respondents of their study are the SKSU uh, taking up uh, Master of Science in Teaching Science. And they are also the 
Deputy teachers teaching physics subjects in the South Surgeon region. And it is a qualitative research. And in this study, of course, we make use of the learning journals. After giving them some sort of activity, they have to come up to have to write or answer the questions on, on what are the learnings they have in their daily uh, task or related to the activity that were given to them. And of course, the activity sheets and the observation or the evaluation forms. So since this is done virtually, so the teachers uh, are really doing the evaluation or the observations of the dis different activities via online by just simply checking the videos uploaded by the students, submitted, and other uh, uh, tasks that are being uh, are required to the students, of course. And there's an interview uh, conducted to these uh, participants. And uh, thematic analysis and case study, and of course, the triangulation of these different instruments was being utilized in this study as well. As to the result and findings, These are the technological devices that are commonly used in the conduct of process. Of course, um, as majority, most of the students as well as the faculty are making use of the Android phone, followed by the laptop. And the smartphone, of course, the uh, desktop computer, the iPhones, uh, very minimal for the tablet and that of the iPad. And uh, as you can see here, based on the results, we can say that the experiences in using the common technological devices and conducting the virtual classes, we have only three themes here. There is a peer collaborations and communication with the IT expert. As to what I have mentioned, not all physics teachers are really IT experts. So with this, since it is really high time or it's really a call for them to really somehow uh, be adept on the utilization of these different gadgets. So with this, they collaborate with the different IT experts that we have in, in the, they have in their respective schools in order for them to somehow have a full grasp or have a, good uh, manipulation of these different gadgets and to somehow improve also their uh, teaching learning activities conducted to their fellow students. And all requirements are making, are conducted, the online submission of these different requirements, thus dependent to the internet connectivity. As again, as I have mentioned earlier, uh, we are very dependent to the internet connectivity since uh, all classes are done virtually. And the positive experience that they have in the conduct of this uh, virtual classes, of course, according to the respondents, they become more creative in completing the task and or needs using technological devices in an online learning. So they learn a lot of teaching strategies, making use of the different uh, um, activities that somehow can tickle or can uh, improve the participations of their students to actively participate in their class discussion and uh, more uh, tasks uh, were given but of course with a full grasp and understanding of the different physics concepts and lastly of course there is of course a gaining of new learning experiences which strengthens the online learning capacities. So in every activities that they are conducting, uh, of course, there is always a new learning as to on how they are going to prepare the activities or the tasks or even the problem sets provided to their students. And of course, Technological devices here encourage the physics teachers to develop the meaningful home-based projects that enable students to engage in the critical thinking and problem solving. So here, students are able to restructure and redesign uh, their classroom and to somehow the faculty there uh, or the teachers develop or improve 
their classroom instruction by restructuring and redesigning just to produce an environment that promotes the development of higher order thinking skills or the hearts of our students. Technical, technological devices really improve the virtual teaching performance of the physics teachers. So how it affects the virtual teaching performance of the physics, of course, as what I have mentioned, they become more creative in delivering the instructions in the virtual platform. So here, because of this creativity of the teacher, somehow there is really an improvement as to the learner's attendance, because what the teacher are doing there, um, since it's virtual, the teacher can do the record while conducting the online classes. And of course, students can really be uh, checked uh, by just simply uh, checking the, the recorded uh, classes. So with that also, the students are well aware that they must really participate well in order for them to have a recorded uh, attendance or oral participations while conducting these virtual classes. And of course, uh, they develop the contextualized virtual simulations activities to strengthen learners conceptual understanding of physics concepts. And of course, here, what is good is the learners become independent. So as you can see, as what I have emphasized there, contextualized virtual simulation activities. So I just uh, want to show you what are this example of the contextualized virtual simulations activities conducted by the students. Uh, just for a moment. Just for a moment, sir. Okay. I will be sh I will be sharing. Uh, I will be sharing the sample of this uh, activities conducted for you to really have a full grasp of how this uh, uh, contextualized virtual simulations are being conducted in our region. In spite of the pandemic that we have, still uh, classes must go on and tasks must be. Uh, uh, conducted by the, our students. So I will be sharing just for a moment. Oh. Uh, I think okay, Dr. Christine. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm okay, sir. Uh, there's some sort of technical problem, but uh, I will be sharing now. Oh, I cannot find. Wait, love. Just for a moment, everyone. No worries, Dr. Okay, share but screen. You, maybe you have three minutes to go. Yeah, yeah, I, I can, uh, I will be able to. Uh, so I'll just run through. Uh, and of course, uh, the sample activities that are being uh, presented here, it increased the opportunity for exploration without fear of the public embarrassment. This is the best thing that the virtual learning activity is uh, really giving our students. They have this... Uh, opportunity for exploration without being fear of the public embarrassment. So I will be playing the sample of the activities. Uh, oh. I, I have, I got a technical problem again uh, for a while, please.
Okay, so so those are the example of the activities that uh, we have uh, presented, uh, performed by our students, of course, this time of virtual learning activity. And uh, in conclusion, we can say that amidst the COVID-19 pandemic, the physics education or the physics teachers in the South Sargent region has become more resilient by developing the 21st century skilled educators with the aid of the different technological devices. And I can, I want to share also this new reflection or the reflection that I have in the conduct of this study. The COVID-19 cannot stop us science educators from delivering quality learning and maximizing our learners' potential. Nothing is impossible as long as we are committed and passionate in teaching for the word, impossible can be read as I'm possible. So yours truly is Dr. Christine Pueblo Abo, a graduate of Doctor of Philosophy in Science Education major in Physics at the University of San Carlos, Cebu City, and a recipient of a DOSC AHTHRD program. And the SKSU, where I am connected right now, of course, offers 48 programs with the seven campuses. And our university is recognized as the DOSC niche for halal research in the region and we are the only state university in Sultan Kudarat and the only system-wide ISO certified 
since 2018 to present in the entire Region 12. So thank you so much, International Conference Science, Physics, and Education, organized by the Department of Physics Education of the University of Mataram, Lumbuk, Indonesia. And of course, special thanks to Dr. Aris Doyan. Thank you so much. Very well. Thank you very much. So thank you. So very I hope I shared yeah. you. Okay, thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Christine. Very interesting. Okay, um, everyone. Uh, actually, the next ses for this session today is a uh, talk by Dr. Gunawan, but uh, he confirmed to me that he has any uh, any problem, any technical problem to join with us. So while we waiting, Dr. Gunawan. Uh, maybe uh, we can discuss about uh, the Dr. Christine uh, presentation. And Dr. Christine, we have many pro many, many questions in the chat Zoom. And because yeah. your topic is very interesting, I think. <laughs> okay, maybe I can um, read uh, the question for you. The first one is from uh, Dr. Mr. Aris Doyan. Yeah. Okay. Uh, see right there. Thank you so much to. Oh, sorry. Um. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Dr. Christine. Uh, scaffolding theory requires students to be responsible in learning so that students can understand physics lesson well. Thus, giving responsibility to students will make them feel burdened in learning. Yeah, because uh, we know um, the implementation of the virtual learning is depend on many factors. So what do you think, Dr. Christine? Okay, actually, uh, thank you for that question, Dr. Aris. Uh, actually, at first, our students, of course, find it very difficult. The mere fact that the manner or the approach in the delivery of this lesson is is somehow new to them. But of course, it is very important that uh, uh, somehow an orientation prior to the conduct or giving of these activities must be clear to the students for them to have uh, full grasp. And somehow uh, there, uh, there must be a feeling of excitement for them in conducting such activity. Yes, that is really true. At first, they find it very, uh, very bored. But uh, when they try to relate these physics concepts, can be uh, is also being uh, conducted or are being observed in their daily activities. So that is where uh, the this uh, experiential or this uh, enjoyment uh, comes in. Uh, it is just only at the start that they somehow feel the burden in doing this activity. But as they go, and as soon as they will be, uh, uh, how do you call that? Uh, as soon as they are already engaged or uh, totally adapted to the virtual learning or the conduct of these classes, uh, somehow every time you are going to do these activities, it will always uh, an excitement uh, feeling for them to have that. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Christine. Uh, I hope it's, may, uh, it's clear for uh, Dr. Haris Bayan for his question. And yeah, Dr. Gunawan still uh, not joined us yet. So we continue for the next question, sure. maybe for Dr. Christine. <laughs> yes, sir. Please okay, do. Uh, the second one from Oh, I, I can read. Uh, Husnul, maybe, yeah? Or from Husnul. Question for Dr. Christine. I have read the abstract of the presenter articles and heard your explanation about the use of technology during the COVID-19 COVID pandemic. This situation allows basic teachers to develop themselves. The question is, what about senior teachers who do not understand use technology? What is the solution? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think it's yeah. a, a classic problem for us. <laughs> what do you that, think, Dr. Really, Christine? Yeah, that's really true. Actually, in the university, we have one part of our faculty are really uh, a senior citizen. And of course, uh, 
Uh, one eight pala. It's it's only one eight of our faculty. But of course, since uh, as a vice president for academic affairs of the university, there is indeed a big challenge on the division on how to somehow motivate this faculty. So what we are trying to do here is we do the mentoring with our colleagues, and of course, so we all we assigned and we conducted series of orientation or training workshops in order for them to have a full grasp of utilizing this technology. Actually, sir, uh, to give you an, uh, an idea, the university come up with a new uh, learning management system. It's an e-leads, uh, wherein we have already built in the four-in-one uh, within that uh, uh, LMS that we have in the university. The Google Meet is already there. Uh, we can do the chatting. The solving of grades are there already. So. It cannot be done in just an overnight, but of course, um, it is very important that there should be a series of training conducted to our faculty in order for them to have the full grasp and adaptations with this uh, new technology that we have. But what is very important here is we have to encourage the, the or empowering our IT people, our IT experts to help the the senior teachers uh, or uh, senior teachers that are not well versed in terms of technology. So maybe that's the, the point there because uh, with, the, with the generation right now, I guess all of us or majority, uh, if not all of the, the teachers right now are having their Android phone. So, I, and by just simply looking at the video, YouTube, uh, it will be easy for them. So that's what we are doing in our university. We see to it that all the transactions, all this uh, uh, um, uh, learning management that we have with the LMS that we have, uh, it might, aside from we have the black, white, black and white of this, we also try to translate this in a form of a video for our faculty to have a full grasp and understanding of this uh, newly developed technology that we have in the university, of course. Okay, thank you, Dr. Christine. Yeah, I think the point is we have adapt. All of us we have adapt to the this to this situation. <laughs> I yeah, think. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um. Uh, Dr. Christine, maybe the this the discussion we continue later because Dr. Yeah. Gunawan have joined with us. So, uh, good afternoon, Dr. Gunawan. Do you hear me? Good afternoon, Ms. Yud. Yeah, thank you very Can much, you Dr. Gunawan. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, okay, everyone, because Dr. Punawan have joined with us, so we will continue uh, the talk from Dr. Gunawan. Uh, let me introduce uh, him first. Dr. Gunawan is a vice dean of teacher training and education uh, faculty, University of Mataram. He also lecturer in the physics education study program university of mataram he will talk about investigating students problem solving abilities based on gender in teaching of physics with virtual laboratory so uh, dr gunawan uh, do you want to share screen yourself okay okay Dr. Naman, if you are ready, the table is yours. Please, doctor, for 20 minutes speaking. Okay, thanks to committee and moderators, uh, Mr. Yudi. Uh, so we can share experience in this session. Uh, the Honorable uh, Mrs. Christine Pueblo Abu PhD from Philippines, uh, which has presented interesting materials before. 
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, on this occasion, allow us to uh, present our research uh, entitled Investigating Student Problem Solving Abilities Based on Gender in Teaching of Physics with uh, Virtual Laboratory. Uh, this is our research grant with uh, our great team uh, in a National Competitive Fund. Uh, the study of physics is uh, contained is a various concept. Uh, there is a concrete concept, abstract concept, and concept uh, with the principle. Uh, the form variety of this concept uh, require the right learning method and need student-centered learning method. Uh, student-centered learning requires uh, good problem-solving abilities. And problem-solving abilities is uh, one of uh, higher order thinking skills. Uh, problem-solving ability is an essential ability for student and problem solving abilities uh, must be trained on the on a continuous basis and evaluate through assessment process the experimental method in the laboratory can be used as an observation method uh, because it directly guides students to hone their problem solving abilities by saying and experiencing directly the problem given. But not all physics concepts can be carried out by direct experimental activities. Uh, some of them are uh, constrained by material facilities or even security problem in doing so. Uh, the solution given to show a physical phenomenon that is uh, difficult to do in direct experimental activities is to use virtual laboratory based software that uh, can interact with its users. Uh, the use of uh, software in the form virtual laboratory uh, can integrate virtual lab computer simulation, uh, has many advantages uh, based on uh, our previous studies. In general, the virtual world with all its advantages will make it easier for students to observe something that is difficult to observe, see more clearly and carry out problem solving process more easily than direct experiments. The virtual, lab, uh, the virtual laboratory application in physics learning uh, is, is proven to be able to improve the ability to construct physics concept and logical inference in our research in uh, 2014 and uh, can increase the inquisitiveness open to new idea and respect for the opinion of others. Uh, gender, dif uh, gender difference is uh, our focus in this paper, uh, a unique theme on the topic of problem solving. In our previous study, uh, there were difference in the creativity of male and female student, and they are different in mastery of PC concept in some cognitive aspect. Uh, the result of this study discuss the use of virtual lab that are associated with a difference in the ability of problem solving abilities in the term of gender aspect have not been widely implemented. In this study, virtual, labora virtual laboratory media have been used in the learning process of physics, uh, which are expected to improve student problem solving abilities. The study also explore more in the process of solving problem that occur in male and female student due to, uh, to the use of virtual media lab. 
uh, our method in this research, I use quasi experimental study. Engage three class in a senior high school in uh, Mataram, West Nusa Tenggara. Uh, the subject were selected using purposive sampling technique, suggesting three male and uh, female student. Not all student in treatment class were taken as subject. Student were picked up based on male and female student conformity in their initial ability to avoid to different in number of both group. Each student had to deal with a preliminary and final test. After the initial test was given, uh, each class was treated with virtual lab assistant, assisted learning uh, set into each session in each school. Uh, the final test was given after the lesson. The test, which was designed as easy question, used to measure the level of problem solving skills, consists of uh, 10 items, which is analyzed with uh, five level of problem solving skills, uh, identify and define problem, define goals and objective, generate, uh, generate solution, uh, make a plan of action and uh, follow through. Increase of problem solving skill uh, is determined by uh, calculation finding score of end gain. Uh, this is our finding in this uh, research. In the uh, result, so that student in a class experience at, uh, an increase in problem solving abilities uh, based on the result of the end game test, uh, female student experience a higher increase in problem solving abilities compared to male student in class A and B, while in class C, male student had a higher increase than female student. Uh, in the class A, the improvement of male and female problem solving abilities is classified as being in the moderate category. In class B, in the uh, medium category two, with different in female student being certain uh, percent to the uh, male student. In contrast to uh, classes A and B in class C, male student experience a higher increase uh, than female student in the medium improvement category with a difference of 5%. Uh, based on the figure two, there are difference in the improvement of problem solving uh, abilities in each step, increasing the problem solving ability of female student is uh, higher than that of male student in its of problem solving step. Uh, in step one, identify and define problem. The increase in female and male student in uh, the medium category. In step two, uh, male student have an increase in the low category, while the increase in uh, female belong to the medium category with a difference of 7%. In uh, step three, generate solution uh, has the highest increase compared to others improvement. Uh, both male and female student experience uh, an increase in the medium category with a difference of uh, 3% of female experience uh, in a higher increase in step four, uh, make a plan uh, of action. There is a significant difference between male and female student. Uh, male student have a low increase in problem solving abilities while a woman, a female student have an increase in the medium category with difference uh, in both of them by 
16%. Uh, the final step in problem solving, a female student had a slightly higher increase than male student with a different of 5%. Uh, uh, some of aspect uh, we can discuss in this uh, paper, uh, use of virtual uh, laboratory can improve the problem solving abilities of male and female student with virtual laboratory uh, as media, media learning. Uh, the test result uh, so that uh, both male and female student experience an increase in problem solving abilities. Increasing the problem solving ability of female student was higher than uh, of male student in the moderate improvement category. Uh, female students are better able to find solution to problem uh, rise based on the uh, topic discussed. Uh, Butler and uh, Colony, 2016, state that uh, problem solving activities are activities that, that are uh, chosen by educator to help students learn concept. Uh, both male and female student. At the same time, successful problem solving can be used uh, as an indicator of excellent conceptual learning. Uh, many, stu many studies have uh, provided evidence that pro problem solving often increases student learning opportunities. So it can be seen that the increase in problem solving abilities in both male and female students help them in mastering the concept of physics. Uh, the highest increase experienced by male, female and male student in step three in generate solution indicators. Uh, in the third step, there was uh, no significant difference between male and female student. Uh, the student bring up the idea to produce solution uh, to existing problem. Uh, Problem students have been trained to find solution of problem through experiments, experimental activities. Students are also trained in contributing ideas and exchange ideas during the discussion process between uh, group members and uh, female students uh, can easily solve problem step by step according to indicator of problem solving abilities. Uh, conclusion in uh, this paper uh, is learning physics using virtual laboratory media proper to be able to improve student problem solving abilities. The improvement of problem solving abilities in male and female student in the medium category and the analysis of Eight states of problem solving indicator. A significant increase was shown by the students and gain score in each class, classified as an increase in the medium and low categories. Uh, problem solving abilities in male is slightly lower than female student, but not significant different. Improved improve problem solving is also analyzed uh, based on problem solving step, female student experience a higher increase than male student in each step with a moderate improvement category. Thank you. Very well. Thank you very much, Dr. Gunawan. Um, so everyone, um, we we going to the discussion session, but uh, this is not only for Dr. Gunawan, but also, but also with Dr. Christine. And I think the speaker's topic today is very interesting for us because uh, I read uh, there are many questions for our speakers in the sessions. And yeah, um, I think we uh, move on to the uh, question for Dr. Gunawan. Uh, there are three questions, but Maybe I have a question first for Dr. For Dr. Gunawan. Okay. Um, uh, you said in your research uh, 
uh, in your result research is uh, the ability of female student is higher than of male student. So you uh, compare between male and female student. My question is, uh, what is the main issue today in 21st century? So you have to compare, still compare between male and female. I think uh, today uh, we we can see that uh, both male or female have a, a same chance to 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 learning or to study. What do you think, Doctor Bruno? Uh, thank you, Mr. Yudi, uh, moderator in this session. Uh, good question. Uh, male and female students have same opportunity in learning in our class, in our session, in uh, laboratory activity. Uh, but genders, genders today is uh, interesting topic uh, in some research uh, such as in uh, competitive national uh, fund uh, uh, while uh, male and female student uh, how male and female student learn uh, about uh, other topic uh, how male and female student have a different increase in uh, some variable, some indicators in uh, higher order thinking skill. Uh, example, in a uh, different paper uh, with uh, result in other paper, in uh, some paper with uh, same topic, uh, we, with our team, uh, uh, find the interesting uh, topic to explore for next research. Uh, example, the uh, female, female student have uh, verbal creativity uh, higher than a male student. Uh, we, we need uh, some uh, next research to find uh, analysis result for how this result uh, can be found. Okay, thank you, Dr. Brown. <coughs> so the gender is still an uh, interesting issue for what we, we have to study, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, the second question, uh, maybe from Husno Fuadi to Dr. Gunawan. Uh, are there any problems experienced by students while using the virtual lab and how to overcome them? Because not all students can operate computer well. Yeah, classic problem, I think. What do you think, Dr. Gunawan? Okay. Uh, thank you, Husno Fuadi. Uh, every student have uh, different have different skills have different uh, knowledge about the computers about the program and some uh, software maybe so uh, the result while the a student a male or female student uh, experience with the computer uh, computer simulation or other program uh, have uh, different result in the test result or cognitive result and uh, thinking skill indicator maybe. Uh, but in the uh, our research uh, when using the virtual lab, uh, there are any problem in uh, some student but not for all student. Uh, some student uh, cannot operate the uh, others program. Uh, some computer uh, not work properly. Uh, in others uh, condition, uh, 
uh, when the virtual lab uh, net internet access for student itu uh, that uh, internet access is uh, not supported in our our program uh, so uh, for student uh, when uh, using virtual lab in uh, for support uh, physics learning I need to uh, initial initial experiment initial training for uh, all students so uh, all of students have uh, similar similar initial knowledge about the research about the program okay uh, thank you yeah very well very interesting dr gunawan thank you very much um uh, the topic uh, in this session is very interesting because there are a lot of questions in our chat room. But uh, because of limited of time, uh, limit of time, I can I cannot to read all the questions for you in this session. But uh, maybe I have a last question for you both, uh, Dr. Christine and Dr. Gunawan. Uh, Dr. Christine uh, talk about virtual learning, and Dr. Gunawan talk about virtual laboratory that uh, two, two concept is uh, very relevant in today's situation in pandemic era. So if I hope, I hope the pandemic situation is uh, if over and we can meet again offline with our student. So uh, is the virtual learning or virtual laboratory still relevant in the uh, offline class? Maybe Dr. Christine first, what do you think? Dr. Uh, hello, sir. Good morning again. Uh, for me, uh, virtual class is still uh, significant even in the offline classes because in our university, we have this uh, two mode, the synchronous and asynchronous. So um, even though the students cannot have um, real time access of these classes. So we, in the asynchronous, we just simply upload the task given to the students at, at their own pacing. They can just simply uh, open that one and access that. And where, as one of the questions here a while ago, how about the remote uh, students in the remote area? So that's the only time when they can go down and find the stable internet connectivity. And in spite of the fact that uh, the schedule that he or she opened the uh, or accessed that uh, upload task, uh, uploaded task. Of course, uh, uh, still uh, uh, they will be, they were given ample time to access that. So it's very important that even though it's uh, offline, still uh, virtual learning can still uh, uh, has a significant role as to the uh, maximizing the potentials of our students in terms of the thesis concepts. Thank you very much, Dr. Christine. Um, so, how about Dr. Gunawan? What do you think, Doctor? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yudi. Uh, virtual lab is important to uh, support our learning in uh, the pandemic era. Uh, experimental is very important to support physics teaching. Uh, but in some condition, uh, net uh, support on an adequate internet network uh, when needed to support the physics teaching. Uh, but our condition in uh, Mataram, especially in uh, some condition, uh, internet connection is not supported in our uh, research, in our uh, teaching. Uh, when needed the internet access. So uh, some innovation uh, need to uh, start with uh, Spada Unram maybe and uh, some other uh, innovation to support physics teaching. So uh, cognitive aspect and cognitive uh, indicator of critical critical thinking skill and uh, higher order thinking skill uh, such as uh, problem solving, creativity, and 
uh, so on can be increased in uh, all of our student, male and female student. Thank you. Very well. Thank you very much, Dr. Gunawan. So it is very interesting. Even in the, the offline class, the two concept of the virtual con this virtual concept still can be developed in the future. Very interesting. Uh, okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think the it is the end of this session because of the limit time. So I thank you to Dr. Christine and Dr. Gunawan. Uh, Welcome. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Enjoy Mr. and share Mrs. with Christine. us. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, thank you very much for your attention in this session. Uh, and now we move on to the uh, other session. And once again, thank you very much, Dr. Christine and Dr. Gunawan and all of you. I am Igusti Ngurah Yudi Handayana. Thank you very much and good afternoon. I, uh, I think I will... Uh, back to the master of ceremony, Miss Nina. So the table is yours. Thank you very much. is our last section of keynote speakers. We would like to say sincerely thanks full to Christine Pueblo Abo PhD from Sultan Kudarat State University, Philippines, and also to Dr. Gunawan MPD from University of Mataram, Indonesia for your great presentation and your great knowledge. And we would like to say thanks to the moderator, Igusti Ngurayudi Handayana MSJ for leading the uh, conference. Ladies and gentlemen, before we're going to the next session, we'd like to ask you to turn on your camera because we're going to take a photo. To all the committees, you can turn on your cameras too, please. Okay. Okay. On my sign, you must have a bright smile. One, two, three. Thank you. Once again, once again, ladies and gentlemen, on my side, one, two, three. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, before we're going to break session, I would like to remind you again about our parallel session uh, for presenters. If there is any of you who would like to change the PPT file for your presentations, we would like to ask you to share your file before the break room to make sure everything will run well on parallelization later. So you can give the file to the moderator via WhatsApp group for your room. And also for the moderators of plenary sessions, there will be short briefing in order to inform you uh, regarding the procedures of the plenary sessions. And its operator will automatically group all of you into your room. So please stay on your laptop. And the break sessions will be end at 2 p.m. jam 2 wita, and we will start our parallel sessions in 2 p.m. or jam 2 wita. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, this is our second day of ICSPE 2021. Thank you very much for your attention. We're going to meet at 2 p.m. with us. I'm Mina Nisrina. I'm Rangga Alifarista. Good afternoon. Assalamualaikum, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you for all. Thank you so much, Dr. Aris. Thank you, Mrs. Christine. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Aris. Sir Gunawan, thank you so much. Sir Gusti, thank you so much. Very great moderator. Very nice. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Nice, nice, nice to be here. Nice to meet you. Maybe oh, we will meet again for yeah, next week. Yeah, I hope to see you next year. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Yang Maria. Yang Maria. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and all the presenters of the second day of International Conference on Physics and Education 2021. In a few minutes, we are going to start our parallel sessions, but before that, I would like to remind you again about your presentation uh, file. If you still didn't send it to the committee, you can send it, or if you want to present by yourself, you can do, uh, do it by yourself. And the second one, don't forget to rename your ID with the correct format. It will give the easier for us to recognize which rooms for your uh, for your for your room in the break sessions. And if you still get confused about which the break room you will be put in, the committee will be lead you on the uh, on your right uh, on the right uh, in the break room. So. Uh, don't forget because we will start in a few minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, welcome back to the parallel session. We're going to go to the session in five minutes later. See you in parallel session. I'm Nina Nisrina. And I'm Rangal Farsta. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Sudah ma bisa masuk nggak nih Pak?
Okay. Ini berapa tu? Minggu satu nak apa? Besok minggu satu ni apa? Merah ni, merah, merah ni tidak bisa. Besok minggu dua ni. Pakai. Apa pakai berapa? Untuk lihat tadi satu. Yeah. 
Masuk Pak, di sini ruang kita. Hmm? Room satu gitu. Room satu. Oh, kita room berapa? Room satu. Room satu ini Pak. Itu kan? Nih. Nih. Oh, join Pak, join. Belum join kita.
Okay. Uh, are you here? Are you hear me? Hello? Hello? Hello, everybody. Itu berapa? Itu berapa? Berarti bukan ini, berarti. Room belum, oh. break room dulu, Pak. Mas, break, break it room. Ini ya? Ya. Dan room satu. Room satu. Hmm. Saya lempar lagi.
Pak Diki, itu kita ada di sini, tapi 15 orang. Gak apa-apa, tunggu aja, berarti presentasi belum selesai. Kan? Yang penting ke main room utama. Ya. Ya, yang lainnya masih belum selesai kayaknya Bu Dina. Iya. Iya sepertinya.
hilang uh, mana dong masuk masuk pak masuk ke break room masuk betul mana dia uh, oke okay, everyone uh, no, kita kerumut apa ini kerumut apa Ya? Masuk ke room. Oh, iya. Makanya lihat oh, iya. nah. oh, Oke. Okay. Oh ya. Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. problem.
menyadari babak baru era modern yang penuh tantangan, Universitas Mataram berkomitmen menjadi universitas yang berbasis riset dan berdaya saing internasional. Yang dilandasi dengan semangat ketakwaan, kemandirian, dan kecendekiaan. Terletak di ibu kota Nusa Tenggara Barat, Universitas Mataram terbukti memiliki daya tarik yang kuat bagi mahasiswa dari dalam dan luar negeri. Tercatat sejak tahun 1982, Universitas Mataram menawarkan Fakultas Keguruan dan Ilmu Pendidikan dengan tujuan melahirkan cendekiawan muda yang mendidik dan mencerdaskan. Selamat datang di kampus FK Unram. Kami bertekad membawa FKIP Unram menjadi LPTK yang menghasilkan lulusan yang berkualitas dan berdaya saing internasional melalui pendidikan dan pembelajaran berbasis riset. Kami berkomitmen untuk meningkatkan kualitas layanan pendidikan, relevansi hasil riset, dan pengabdian kepada masyarakat, serta mengembangkan kualitas perencanaan, sistem informasi, dan kebersamaan dalam penguatan sistem tata kelola kelembagaan. Fakultas Keguruan dan Ilmu Pendidikan Universitas Mataram menawarkan 10 program studi unggulan. Dengan fasilitas penunjang studi yang sangat memadai, mahasiswa akan dibekali keterampilan praktis di masing-masing program studi. Komitmen untuk menjadi fakultas dengan basis penelitian yang tepat menjadi program studi pendidikan fisika, kimia, dan biologi menempati peringkat tiga besar program studi terbaik secara nasional versus Hello? and technology index. Didukung dengan tenaga pendidik yang kompeten di bidangnya, Fakultas Keguruan dan Ilmu Pendidikan Universitas Mataram berhasil meraih hmm. secara hmm. nasional. Kami hmm. bekerja sama dengan berbagai pihak luar negeri guna memberi kesempatan mahasiswa melakukan PPL luar negeri untuk menambah wawasan dan pengetahuan mahasiswa agar mampu berhasil. Bu, namun mungkin dipercepat mungkin karena sebentar lagi setelah semua room selesai kita akan closing ceremony. Waduh. Sebagai bentuk usaha pengembangan diri, mahasiswa didorong untuk melakukan kegiatan di luar kelas. Tersebar di seluruh penjuru Indonesia, alumni Fakultas Keguruan dan Ilmu Pendidikan Universitas Mataram banyak mengabdi untuk negeri. Kebanggaan saya bagi ilmu mata Universitas Mataram terus berusaha meningkatkan kualitas layanan pendidikan untuk menghasilkan para pendidik, para guru, para dosen yang qualified, dan guru dan dosen yang memiliki visi ke depan untuk membangun sekendara secara khusus di Indonesia secara umum. Apresiasi dan kebanggaan saya untuk alma mater saya tercinta, tapi untuk sementara yang telah menghasilkan para alumni yang bisa mengabdi bekerja dan menunjukkan dedikasinya sebagai alumni yang mumpuni dan alumni yang siap bersaing. Pengalaman kuliah S1 di FKIP, Fakultas Keguruan dan Ilmu Pendidikan Universitas Mataram, telah begitu membekas kuat sebagai pendorong pencarian saya di bidang film. Maka anda atau siapapun jangan ragu untuk memilih dan kuliah di FKIP Universitas Mataram. Kami Dekanat FKIP Universitas Mataram berkomitmen membangun budaya mutu, meningkatkan kualitas pendidikan dengan semboyan FKIP mendidik dan mencerdaskan. Kami percaya mimpi yang besar berawal dari langkah yang besar. Dan kami siap menuntun langkahmu.
first city of Mataram was established on October 2nd, 1962. Located at the heart of idyllic island of Lombok, which renowned for its beauty, natural and cultural diversity, Make Mataram University poses a great opportunity to explore knowledge. Become an internationally competitive research-based university. Ignite the passion for Mataram University to continue pioneering intellectuals by creatively applying their knowledge in research and discovery. Nurturing talented youth to become future leaders who are eager to pursue the truth based on faith and piety. Is Mataram University a firm ground to contribute at its best to the society? Mataram University is ready to answer the call with nine faculties, 58 departments, study programs, postgraduate programs, vocational programs, diploma. Faculty of Economics. Husbandry. Faculty of Agriculture. Faculty of Law. Faculty of Teacher Training and Education. Faculty of Engineering. Mathematics and Natural Science, Faculty of Medicine, Faculty of Food Technology and Agro Industry, Study Programs, Communication Studies, International Relations, Sociology. Mataram University mission in optimizing research and discovery and haste with facilities and accessibility for the students and researchers as well as stakeholders with the same common goals in supporting education to solve humanity problems to fulfill our social responsibility. Hand in hand with the society, Mataram University never to choose run alone. We prefer to walk together through collaboration and joint cooperation with partners from every corner of the world in exploring knowledge, science, and technology. Mataram University commit to find the best way in increasing society's quality of life. We have tasted the same hard times. We have swallowed the same sour times. We have passed the storm of challenge and stay strong. Sebagai Sekda Provinsi Nusantara Barat. Ketua DPRD Provinsi Nusa Tenggara Barat, Direktur Jenderal Prasarana dan Sarana Pertanian Kementerian Pertanian Republik Indonesia, saya sangat bangga melihat perkembangan Universitas Mataram yang begitu maju. Saya merasa bangga menjadi bagian dari Universitas Mataram. Dan kami sebagai Ketua DPRD mendorong agar Universitas Mataram sebagai sebuah universitas berbasis riset sesuai dengan visi misinya pada tahun 2025. Saya yakin Universitas Mataram akan mampu meraih visi dan misinya. Universitas Mataram sebagai salah satu perguruan tinggi yang mumpuni untuk mempersiapkan kader-kader penerus. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.
Universitas Mataram adalah perguruan tinggi negeri yang terletak di pusat kota Mataram, Provinsi Nusa Tenggara Barat. Hadir di tengah-tengah masyarakat Nusa Tenggara Barat, Universitas Mataram berkomitmen untuk mengabdi dan membangun negeri. Mencetak putra-putri terbaik yang mampu berkontribusi bagi pembangunan nasional. Di kancah nasional, Universitas Mataram masuk dalam klaster kedua dari lima klaster yang ada dan mampu bersaing dengan 2.148 perguruan tinggi non-vokasi di seluruh Indonesia mampu meraih akreditasi B dengan poin maksimal Berdiri sejak tahun 1962 hingga saat ini Universitas Mataram telah memiliki 9 fakultas Pasca Sarjana dan program studi di bawah naungan rektor terdiri dari 38 program studi S1 9 program studi diploma 3 12 program studi magister dan 1 program studi doktor Fakultas Pertanian Fakultas Peternakan Fakultas Hukum Fakultas Ekonomi dan Bisnis Fakultas Teknik Fakultas Keguruan dan Ilmu Pendidikan Fakultas MIPA Fakultas Kedokteran Fakultas Teknologi Pangan dan Agroindustri Pasca Sarjana Program studi di bawah naungan rektor Ilmu komunikasi Hubungan internasional Sosiologi Universitas Mataram Saat ini memiliki mahasiswa sejumlah 30.609 orang Didukung oleh tenaga pengajar yang profesional Terdiri dari 58 orang profesor 343 orang doktor dan 711 orang magister Di usianya yang ke-57 Universitas Mataram terus meningkatkan kegiatan pendidikan penelitian dan pengabdian kepada masyarakat serta bekerjasama dengan berbagai pihak lembaga dalam dan luar negeri untuk mendukung pelaksanaan Tridharma Perguruan Tinggi Universitas Mataram telah membangun berbagai fasilitas untuk mendukung kegiatan belajar dan mengajar UPT Perpustakaan UPT Teknologi Informasi dan Komunikasi Pusat Bahasa Gedung Dok Gedung Laboratorium Bersama Lapangan Olahraga Rumah Sakit Universitas Matara Gedung Auditorium and Yusuf Abu Bakar Dan kini Universitas Mataram siap menjadi lembaga pendidikan tinggi berbasis riset dan berdaya saing internasional Unram Jaya Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera untuk kita semua. Selamat kepada para mahasiswa baru atas keberhasilannya diterima di program studi pendidikan fisika FKIP Universitas Mataram. Kami percaya bahwa Anda semua akan menggunakan kesempatan yang berharga ini 
untuk berkarya secara maksimal, baik dalam hal meningkatkan kemampuan akademik maupun dalam hal peningkatan soft skill. Pada saat ini, Anda semua telah menjadi bagian dari sivitas akademika atau masyarakat dunia. Bersama para dosen dan mahasiswa program studi pendidikan fisika lainnya, kalian akan berinteraksi, saling asah, asih, dan asuh untuk menemukan jati diri dan mengembangkan segala potensi. Program studi pendidikan fisika memiliki visi mewujudkan program studi pendidikan fisika berbasis riset dan berdaya saing internasional pada tahun 2025. Program studi pendidikan fisika merupakan program studi yang berperingkat satu dalam publikasi ilmiah nasional dan internasional se-Universitas Mataram, dan peringkat tiga dalam website Sinta Dikti terkait dengan rekod kegiatan penelitian dosen. Kurikulum program studi pendidikan fisika telah dirancang untuk membentuk kepribadian pendidik yang menguasai dalam hard skill, mumpuni dalam soft skill, serta memiliki sikap dan perilaku etis yang tinggi. Selamat datang di program studi pendidikan fisika FKIP Universitas Mataram. Semoga Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala melimpahkan kepada kita semua rasa kepedulian dan kebersamaan yang tinggi, dan kekuatan serta kesabaran dalam menjalankan berbagai aktivitas dan tugas kita di program studi yang sama-sama kita banggakan ini. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat datang di program studi pendidikan fisika Fakultas Keguruan dan Ilmu Pendidikan Universitas Mataram. pengajaran pertama yang dilakukan di program studi pendidikan fisika berlangsung pada tanggal 19 Mei 1997 dengan nomor SK pendirian program studi 19 Garing Dikti Garing Cup Garing 2001 dengan SK pendirian program studi pada tanggal 30 Januari 2001 Program Studi Pendidikan Fisika berdiri di bawah jurusan Pendidikan MIPA dan Fakultas Keguruan dan Ilmu Pendidikan Universitas Mataram sebagai program studi yang memiliki visi misi sebagai berikut. Aktivitas akademika yang dimiliki oleh Program Studi Pendidikan Fisika meliputi tujuh orang dosen doktor dan 12 dosen master yang telah menerbitkan berbagai publikasi ilmiah dan buku-buku sebagai bahan ajar. Dalam menunjang pembelajaran, Program Studi Pendidikan Fisika menyediakan sarana berupa laboratorium yang terdiri dari berbagai alat penunjang, mulai dari fisika dasar, elektronika, sampai fisika lanjutan. Program Studi Pendidikan Fisika dipimpin oleh Ketua Program Studi Bapak Dr. Muhammad Mahrus SPD MPD dan Sekretaris Program Studi Bapak Wahyudi MSI memiliki dosen-dosen unggul dalam hal kinerja mengajar, pelayanan, dan dalam tridharma perguruan tinggi. Dosen-dosen Program Studi Pendidikan Fisika terdiri dari Ibu Dr. Randa Hairunisha Syahidu MPD, Bapak Dr. Joni Rohmat MSI, Bapak Dr. Rernat Kosim MSI, Bapak Dr. Ahmad Harjono SSI MPD, Ibu Dr. Randa Susilawati MSI PhD, Bapak Dr. Andus Aris Doyan MSI PhD, Bapak Dr. Gunawan SPD MPD, Bapak Dr. Andus Sutrio MSI, Bapak Syahrial A SPD MSI. Bapak Muhammad Taufik, SPD, MSI Bapak Muhammad Zudi, SSI, MT Bapak Iwayan Gunade, SSI, MTD Ibu Janatin Arduha, SSI, MSC Ibu Hikmawati, SPD, MPD Ibu Satuti Rahayu, SPD, MPD 
Ibu Ninyoman Sri Putu Ferawati SPD MPD dan Bapak Ahmad Musyari SPD MPD. Halo. Mahasiswa Program Studi Pendidikan Fisika Universitas Mataram memiliki berbagai kegiatan yang dilakukan di Himpunan Mahasiswa Pendidikan Halo. Fisika atau Himafis. Himpunan Mahasiswa Pendidikan Fisika telah mengadakan berbagai lomba tahunan. Di antaranya adalah Olimpiade Himafis Galileo se-Bali dan Nusa Tenggara, Olimpiade MIPA se-NTB, workshop penulisan ilmiah, serta kegiatan lain. Selain kegiatan pembelajaran di dalam kelas, pembelajaran juga dilakukan di laboratorium. Namun, tidak hanya pada praktikum dalam lab, terdapat pula praktikum lapangan pada mata kuliah geologi dan geofisika yang setiap tahunnya dilaksanakan di Desa Sembalun, Lombok Timur. Program Studi Pendidikan Fisika juga merupakan program studi peringkat pertama se-Universitas Mataram dalam hal publikasi ilmiah dan merupakan program studi dengan sitasi terbanyak nomor 3 nasional se-Indonesia yang terindeks Sinta Dikti. Hal ini tidak lepas dari kinerja dosen dalam hal Tridharma Perguruan Tinggi melalui berbagai penelitian dan pengabdiannya kepada masyarakat. Selain itu, program studi pendidikan fisika Universitas Mataram juga memiliki mahasiswa-mahasiswa berprestasi baik dalam bidang olimpiade, PKM 5 bidang, penulisan karya tulis ilmiah, timnas, PPL keluar negeri, dan juga sebagai mahasiswa berprestasi tingkat fakultas. Pendidikan fisika juga memiliki banyak alumni yang kompeten, berdaya saing tinggi, dan telah menorehkan berbagai prestasi. Berikut adalah pesan dari alumni kepada mahasiswa baru Program Studi Pendidikan Fisika Universitas Mataram. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Perkenalkan nama saya Muhammad Zulhalfi. Saya adalah salah satu alumni Program Studi Pendidikan Fisika Fakultas Keguruan dan Ilmu Pendidikan Universitas Mataram. Angkatan tahun 2012. Dan saat ini Alhamdulillah berstatus sebagai salah satu mahasiswa program magister dalam bidang manajemen energi di kota Warsaw, Polandia. Selama mengikuti proses pendidikan di program studi pendidikan fisika Universitas Mataram, saya mendapatkan banyak sekali ilmu pengetahuan, banyak sekali motivasi dan nasihat, serta sharing pengalaman dari bapak dan ibu dosen saya. Saya juga mendapatkan atmosfer belajar yang sangat kondusif, sangat suportif dari teman-teman seangkatan saya, juga dari kakak tingkat serta dari adik tingkat, sehingga kesemuanya sangat membantu saya dalam menyelesaikan Studi saya di Prodi Pendidikan Fisika. Warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Perkenalkan nama saya Dia Sabtini Andriani. Saya berasal dari Lombok Timur. Saya alumni Fisika FKIP Angkatan 2011. Saat ini saya sedang menempuh program doktor di Hanyang University Korea. Pengalaman saya belajar di Fisika FKIP itu. Di awal semester, jujur, saya merasa tertekan. Kenapa? Karena Fisika itu bukan background saya. Jadi saya harus belajar dari nol. Um, dan Alhamdulillah saya dipertemukan dengan teman-teman kelas yang sangat care dan welcome Mereka mau membantu dan mengajari saya ketika saya tidak memahami materi yang diberikan oleh dosen uh, Kita juga sering uh, diskusi dan belajar kelompok Intinya kita itu uh, saling bahu-membahu untuk mendapatkan nilai yang bagus Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Perkenalkan, saya Nina Nisrina, alumni S1 Pendidikan Fisika FKIP Universitas Mataram. Saya ucapkan selamat datang dan selamat bergabung di keluarga besar pendidikan fisika. Saya adalah alumni pendidikan fisika angkatan 2012. Saya menempuh pendidikan selama 3 tahun 10 bulan dan lulus pada tahun 2016 dengan predikat cum laude dengan penghargaan judisiawati terbaik dengan IPK 3,83. Selama belajar di pendidikan fisika, saya memperoleh pengalaman yang luar biasa dengan dosen-dosen yang luar biasa pula. Saya diberikan pengalaman dalam membelajarkan dan mendidik serta melakukan riset di bidang pendidikan fisika. Oleh karena itu, saya berhasil menulis artikel ilmiah dan diterbitkan di jurnal-jurnal internasional terindeks Corpus Proceeding Series, Thomson Brother, dan Web of Science. Setelah itu, saya menempuh pendidikan S2 di Magister Pendidikan IPA Pasca Sarjana Universitas Mataram. Dari tahun 
tahun 2018 dan lulus pada tahun 2020 dengan predikat cum laude dengan penghargaan sebagai Indonesia Happy Terbaik dengan IPK 4,00. Prestasi tersebut saya peroleh dari pengalaman luar biasa yang saya bawa dari pendidikan fisika dan berhasil saya gunakan di Magister Pendidikan Halo.
Menyadari babak baru era modern yang penuh tantangan, Universitas Mataram berkomitmen menjadi universitas yang berbasis riset dan berdaya saing internasional. Yang dilandasi dengan semangat ketakwaan, kemandirian, dan kecendekiaan. Terletak di ibu kota Nusa Tenggara Barat, Universitas Mataram terbukti memiliki daya tarik yang kuat bagi mahasiswa dari dalam dan luar negeri. Tercatat sejak tahun 1982, Universitas Mataram menawarkan Fakultas Keguruan dan Ilmu Pendidikan dengan tujuan melahirkan cendekiawan muda yang mendidik dan mencerdaskan. di kampus FK Unram. Kami bertekad membawa FKIP Unram menjadi LPTK yang menghasilkan lulusan yang berkualitas dan berdaya saing internasional melalui pendidikan dan pembelajaran berbasis riset. Kami berkomitmen untuk meningkatkan kualitas layanan pendidikan, relevansi hasil riset dan pengabdian kepada masyarakat, serta mengembangkan kualitas perencanaan, sistem informasi, dan kebersamaan dalam penguatan sistem tata kelola kelembagaan. Fakultas Seguruan dan Ilmu Pendidikan Universitas Mataram menawarkan 10 program studi unggulan. Dengan fasilitas penunjang studi yang sangat memadai, mahasiswa akan dibekali keterampilan praktis di masing-masing program studi. Komitmen untuk menjadi fakultas dengan basis penelitian yang kuat menjadi program studi pendidikan fisika, kimia, dan biologi menempati peringkat tiga besar program studi terbaik secara nasional versi Science and Technology Index. Didukung dengan tenaga pendidik yang kompeten di bidangnya, Fakultas Keguruan dan Ilmu Pendidikan Universitas Mataram berhasil meraih akreditasi B secara nasional. Kami bekerja sama dengan berbagai pihak luar negeri guna memberi kesempatan mahasiswa melakukan PPL luar negeri untuk menambah wawasan dan pengetahuan mahasiswa agar mampu berdaya saing global. Sebagai bentuk usaha pengembangan diri, mahasiswa didorong untuk melakukan kegiatan di luar kelas. Tersebar di seluruh penjuru Indonesia, alumni Fakultas Keguruan dan Ilmu Pendidikan Universitas Mataram banyak mengabdi untuk negeri. Kebanggaan saya bagi ilmu matahari di Fakultas Mataram. terus berusaha meningkatkan kualitas layanan pendidikan untuk menghasilkan para pendidik, para guru, para dosen yang qualified, dan guru dan dosen yang memiliki visi ke depan untuk membangun sekendara secara khusus di Indonesia secara umum. Apresiasi dan kebanggaan saya untuk alma mater saya tercinta, Akhir Putus Mataram, yang telah menghasilkan para alumni yang bisa mengabdi bekerja dan menunjukkan dedikasinya sebagai alumni yang mumpuni dan alumni yang siap bersaing. Pengalaman kuliah S1 di FKIB, Fakultas Keguruan dan Ilmu Pendidikan Universitas Mataram, telah begitu membekas kuat sebagai pendorong pencarian saya di bidang film. Maka Anda atau siapapun, jangan ragu untuk memilih dan kuliah di FKIP Universitas Mataram. Kami, Dekanat FKIP Universitas Mataram, berkomitmen membangun budaya mutu, meningkatkan kualitas pendidikan dengan semboyan FKIP, FKIP mendidik dan mencerdaskan.
Kami percaya mimpi yang besar berawal dari langkah yang besar. Dan kami siap menuntun langkahmu.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the main room of the first International Conference of Science, Physics and Education 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now come to the closing ceremony. And for this closing ceremony, we'll have two closing speech. For the first one, will be delivered by the chairman of PSE, West Nusa Tenggara Branch. We would like to invite Professor Dr. Joni Rohmat, MSE, to come forward. Professor, the table is yours. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon and best wishes for us. The Honorable Vice Dean One of Faculty of Teacher Training and Education, Pergunawan MPD. The Chairman of the First ICSPE. Associate Professor Aris Doyan, MSI, PhD, Head of Physics Education Department, Dr. Muhammad Mahrus, also Honorable All Keynote Speakers, Prof. Jaka Prong, Hao, PhD, from Thailand, Prof. Nur Islami, PhD, Universitas Riau, Indonesia, Prof. Manjula Sarma, from the University of Sydney, Australia, Prof. Hong Jo King, Yung Pok National University, from Republic of Korea, Prof. Dr. Eng Wat Riana, from University of Gajah Mada, Indonesia, Profesor Dr. Agus Suyatna, MSI, from Universitas Lampung, Indonesia, Profesor Dr. Dr. Andes Edi Istiono, MSI, from Yogyakarta State, Indonesia, sorry, Yogyakarta State University, Indonesia, Christine Pablo Abu PhD from University University State University of Sultan Kudarat Philippines Nazarudin SSI MSI PhD from University of Jambi Indonesia Associate Professor Muhammad Mustafa Awang Kecik PhD from University Putra Malaysia Malaysia as well as a keynote speakers who is also my college in physics education study programs. Associate Professor DRA Yususi Lavati MSA PhD and Dr. Gunawan MPD from University of, Mal of Mataram, Indonesia. And also all invited speakers and all the presenters and participants of the first International Conference Science, Physics and Education 2021. We on behalf of Physics Society of Indonesia, branch of West Nusa Tenggara, would like to give a big thank you to Allah SWT because because of his blessing, this conference can be done successfully until now. The rector of University of Mataram and all of university that contribute to this conference. 
The Dean of Faculty and Teacher Training and Education, University of Mataram, for moral and material support. And the last is a physical education study program, University of Mataram. In particular, I would like to congratulate the physical education study program at the University of Mataram and its implementing team who have successfully organized this first international conference called the first international conference on science, physics, and education, which is planned as annual event. Hopefully, this agenda can continue to grow, especially in this inaugural event, which can invite as many as 72 speakers with 13 keynote speakers. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, thank you very much. Hopefully, this conference in the future can provide great motivation for us, especially those who always involved in this in theoretical and applied physics research, physics education research, and its application in our life. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's all my speech. Thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much for Professor Dr. Joni Romat, MSE. Ladies and gentlemen, the next closing speaker will be delivered by the Vice Deans of Academic Affairs of Faculty of Teacher Training, University of Mataram, and officially will close our international conference for today. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Gunawan, MPD. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, everyone. Gentlemen, to us to express gratitude, Rector University of Mataram, Vice Rector, Dean, Faculty of Teacher Training and Education. Vice Dean, Head of Department of Mathematics and Science Education, Head of Physics Education Study Program, and all physics education lecturer from faculty peer training and education, and physics lecturer from faculty of mathematics and science. Thanks also to all keynote speakers, invited speakers who have joined, share their experience and knowledge with all of us. Thank you also to all the speakers, presenters, and conference participants who have particip participated in this event. Thanks to all the committee members who have worked very hard from preparation to completion of this event. Special thanks to conference chairman, associate professor Maris Doyan Pitt, and the grid team, all moderator, technical assistant team who have very supported this event. Chairman of the Indonesian Physical Society, 
who have support this event, Mr. Dr. Juni Rohmat, and the great team of physics society, uh, West Nusa Tenggara team. We all need cooperation and at work for the successful publication of selected paper from this conference. We have to work even harder to maintain the performance and achievement of our study program to the best at University of Mataram, like the previous years. We apologize for our shortcoming and limitation during this event. We also apologize for all participants, all presenters, for the frequent unstable internet connection in this area. As the final part of this speech, allow us to officially close this international conference science physics and education by reading Hamdalah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin. Abillahi Topik Wal Hidayah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you so much for Mr. Gunawan and PD. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to move to the next sessions of our agenda for today. There will be announcements of best presenters from its rooms. And we will mention one by one from its rooms. For, uh, from room one, uh, I would like to congratulate to Umi Salama. Please give a big applause to Miss Umi Salama. Congratulations from room two. Baba Musta. Please give a applause. From room three, congratulations for Laili Martiana. For room four, congratulations for Miss Siti Nur Aziza. From room five, congratulations to my son. From room six, congratulations for Mr. Fauzobi. And the last one from room seven, congratulations to Cosmos Paul Akan. Please give a big applause for this yeah. best presenters of the Best International Conference on Science, Physics, and Education. 2021. Once again, I'd like to apologize if we mention uh, the name of these best presenters in the wrong way. Ladies and gentlemen, we really would like to introduce our heroes the behind scenes of the successful of International Conference Science, Physics, and Education. And this is our great committee. who already hard work to give the best things to provide this event so we can reach the best thing that we can provide for all the participants and also the presenters for today. So we proudly present you and would like to introduce you. Ladies and gentlemen, please wait a moment. 
Before we going to show you the heroes of this conference, we would like to say thanks to all the keynote speakers. We're really proud to have you here in the first conference, which helped by P6 Education. And we'd like to say thank you too, to all invited speakers in every room. We'd like to say thank you very much too, to all the presenters that attend this first international conference of Science Basics and Education 2021. And we hope you can attend this conference again in the next years. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, please. So this is the heroes of the behind scenes of the international conference, Science Basics and Education, who have already contributed and provide the best thing for successful these events. We really thank you full for all the committee and also all of the partner that really hard work for this event. Okay, thank you very much for all the committees. Ladies and gentlemen, we come to our conclusion today. This is the end of the first International Conference of Science, Physics and Education 2021. Let's meet again the next year on the second International Conference of Science, Physics and Education 2022. Let's hope you're not meet this uh, condition again. We're going to see each other person by person. And we would like to say apologize if during in the two days of this international conference there are a lot of mistakes we have made we are as a, the representative of the committee we really apologize for that and once again we really thank you full for all the participants for all the presenters and also our best keynote speakers who want to join with this event and we'll wait you in the next international conference National uh, Science, Physics, and Education 2022. Thank you very much. I'm Mina Nisrina, as your MC, and Ranga Ali Faresta. Good evening. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay, yeah. respect, respect. Goodbye. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. 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 Yeah.